high school football fans. Varsity Media is bringing exciting, exclusive content to you for the 2022 season. Introducing the Varsity Media Pass, available on iOS and Android. Accessible all season long, the Varsity Media Pass features game highlights, weekly podcasts, a clash of styles, out to talk if you love those differing styles, right? Top 10 plays of the week, player interviews, and so much more. Head to varsitymediapass.com to download the app and start enjoying content only Varsity Media can bring. in Uniondale for the Catholic High School Football League Championship Saturday. First game is the double A2 title tilt between top seeded Xavier. The Knights come in at a six and two record against the Mountaineers of Mount St. Michael at six and four. Today's game brought to you by Catholic Health and Long Island Elite Football. Good morning everyone. Dylan Butler here with Pat Godfrey and uh, Pat, it is the morning. We will be here into the evening. Uh, it is the best day of the high school football season. Uh, so excited to bring three huge matchups, starting with uh, kind of a classic one here between Xavier and Mount St. Michael. No doubt, Dylan. This is a day that we've been waiting for for a long time. Always sneaks up on you. Finally here, and we got a great matchup to start off. You know, Xavier, a team that went 1-8 and eight last season, really excited to finish off this turnaround effort and hopefully put an exclamation point on their season with a AA2 title versus the Mountaineers of Mount St. Michael who have had an excellent season themselves. Really excited to, to see this one play out. An overriding theme here for this one, Pat, are the styles, right? And styles, contrasting styles make great fights. And when you look at this one, Traditionally, when we think of Mount St. Michael under their head coach, Mario Valentini, in his 39th season at the helm, you think of that old school option offense, right? And uh, try to prepare and beat us if you can. And there's been a switch there for Mount St. Michael these last two years. Now they are a spread team and they're looking to change things around. And, you know, struggles last year in the first year of a new offense. Uh, this year, they, they've they uh, righted the ship a little bit. They're, they're looking... Uh, to go in the right direction, Mount St. Michael is, and uh, and you know that's a little bit of their storyline. And for Xavier, listen, man, their mom's meatloaf, right? You don't mess with it. There's nothing wrong with it. We're not changing, and that's the that's the style there of their head coach, Chris Stevens, in his 21st year. He is unapologetic about running the single wing. He's like, if you want us to stop it, you got to get me out of this building because it ain't going to happen. Uh, he's a Xavier alum. Both of these guys are Xavier alums with 60 years of combined coaching experience. Uh, you can see Coach Stevens there in that top, uh, right around that 34-35 that yard line. But that's who Xavier is. That's who they've always been. This is the 175th anniversary of their school. That's who Stevens hopes, at least, they will always be. No, I, I love it. I love the, uh, the if it ain't broke, don't fix it mantra from Coach Stevens. The wing tee has been incredibly successful for this program for a long time, and they've ridden it straight back to the AA2 title game. On the flip side, you know, Mount St. Michael is almost as, as strange as it felt the first time watching Georgia Tech spread the ball out, seeing Mount St. Michael's last year switch over to the spread offense from their historical option offense but you know the approach has really worked after you know some growing pains last year they've really thrived on offense led by Mark Pearson at QB and uh, you know just looking to see if they can use that spread to pick up some big points early here today. Let's take a look at some of our players to watch in this one and first for the second seeded Mountaineers of Mount St. Michael and uh, they've got a couple of really good ones here especially led 
by their four-year starter at wide receiver. There you see him, Jabril Carter. He's a big reason why they've went to the spread. Used to be a quarterback. They want to get him more involved in the offense. You see the numbers this year leading the Catholic AA2 in receiving. 33 receptions, 696 yards and 8 TDs. On the other side, Tyler Cadenhead will be massive for the Mountaineers if they are to be successful today. 45 tackles, 3 for a loss, 2.5 sacks as well. Was an all-league selection a year ago, two-year starter at defensive end. You know, Caden Head is a guy who really makes a big difference in this game. With his motor, he gets off the ball quickly, gets after the QB, and he's going to have to do a good job of that today to lead his team to a AA2 title. On the flip side, Jabril Carter, you said it, he's a four-time starter, great speed. You're going to see him moved around the field, contributing on special teams, the return game as well as what he could do with his hands. And boy, is he a big play threat once he gets out in open field. So it could be a real challenge for this Knights defense to try and contain Carter. If you are not familiar with Xavier's offense, expect them to run and run and run and then run a little more. There's not going to be a lot of passing in that game, which uh, means they've got some terrific athletes and guys who have terrific stamina as well. Let's take a look at Xavier's players to watch here today. And we will start... On the offensive side, with their wing back, there you see him, Gavin Gallagher, the GG Express. 60 carries, 778 yards, and eight touchdowns on the year. Third in rushing in the Catholic AA2. On the defensive side, how about Sean Donahue? 59 tackles, five for a loss, two sacks, four pass deflections. Had a team high nine tackles in the semifinal win over Kennedy Catholic. Yeah, you know, people who like an old school football player are going to really enjoy seeing Sean Donahue play. He's a really, really tough dude and gets everything going on defense for Xavier. On the flip side, Gallagher has had a really, really strong year. And uh, also his coach made sure to shout out the fact that not only is he a guy who contributes when the ball is in his hands, but also a great blocker. So he's going to really need to contribute in both uh, elements on offense in order to pull away victorious today. Mount St. Michael a week ago defeated Zavarian 35-7 to in the semifinals. And there you see the bracket in the double A2. And then you see on the other side of it that 48-7 to win over Kennedy Catholic for Xavier. And another interesting note, both of these teams, their season doesn't end here today, Pat. They've got long time Turkey Bowl games. Mount St. Michael will host Cardinal Hayes. Thursday morning up at the Mount right off of Murdoch Avenue there, 79th annual Turkey Bowl, and there is none older than the one between Xavier and Fordham Prep, the two Jesuit schools getting after it down at Aviator. I suspect it'll be windy yep. on Thursday morning there, 99th annual Turkey Bowl between Xavier and Fordham Prep. Yeah, right there, two of the best traditions in Catholic football in New York State, you know, lo long running traditions. But I'm sure both of these teams are going to really make it a point to walk into that Turkey Day matchup as the reigning AA2 t title holders. So, going to be a dogfight here today. Xavier, their last championship was in the AA back in 2015. They beat Christ the King 28 to 25. This is also the 10th anniversary of their uh, really dramatic and and uh, emotional win on, on the anniversary of Sandy. And, and we'll detail that as this game goes along. But so many of their guys, 25% of that team, were displaced during Hurricane Sandy. So many of those guys from the Rockaways and Bell Harbor and uh, and the like. And, and what a dramatic day that was here when they beat St. John the Baptist in 2012, 35-14. Mount St. Michael, they're trying to get back to their first championship uh, win since 2009. That was the double-A against Cardinal Hayes. So uh, it's been a while for both of these teams. Mount St. Michael making their way now onto the field. Let's take a look at the keys uh, for this game for both teams. And uh, as you could expect, Pat, you know, when you have to deal with a single wing, this has not been a case for Mount all year long, right? It's super hard to prepare for. So staying disciplined defensively is really important. What do you want to do against the running team? You want to force them into into uncomfortable situations. So third and long is, is absolutely huge. And they want to be productive with the ball each time they get it. They don't know how many times they're going to, they're going to get it, the way that Xavier uh, dominates the, the time of possession. So each 
time with the football is going to be really important for Mount. And obviously for Xavier, uh, offensively, you can't beat yourselves, right? Those penalties really then set you back and make up those long situations. They want to adjust well to the Mount defense and uh, contain Pearson, the quarterback, and Carter, the wide receiver. Yeah, for this Mount St. Michael defense, it's really going to come down to sound gap responsibility and control, especially on the defensive line. You know, whenever you're playing up against the wing tee, uh, that you need to be in the right spot at all times or else you can really, really pay. Uh, on the flip side, you know, if you're, if you're Xavier running the ball the way that they do, really important for them to stay out of the, you know, out of the uh, third and long type situations, avoid dumb penalties that are going to get you behind the sticks. In order for them to move and groove the way that they like to on offense, they need to continually march with the ball. So that's going to be really key for them all day long. There's some special seniors on that side uh, warming up right now. Probably none bigger than Jabril Carter. Uh, he's been a huge reason why Mount has been turning things around these last four years. There's been some lean times there as well, but Carter has stuck through. A four-year starter, as we said, and our John Perez was able to speak with Carter leading up to this game. Jabril, now that you're at the championship round against Xavier, I know it's not over yet, and there's obviously still a chance to win a title, but how satisfied are you with this year? I mean, we feel, us as a whole, as a whole individual, we feel great about our chances this year because we've been working so hard since the beginning of the summer. We all knew what we wanted, and we want to bring a championship back to Mount. And, and Coach was saying, too, how you specifically worked hard in the offseason. And I'd like you to give us a little light into what those offseason workouts look like because we're coming in from the outside, and we only see the finished product. But as you know, it's a day-by-day -day process. Yeah, as soon as football done, I joined track. I did indoor and outdoor, and I made it to um, – indoor um, state and I made it to outdoor nationals and outdoor state. And with all of that, I'm sure you look at yourself not just as a football player, but also as a track star too. Um, yeah. How much did you grow to love competing in track and field? I grew to love it a lot. I mean, to be honest, track and field and football are it's hand in hand. I, I love both sports equally right now and I want to dominate in both of them. Looking in the future, do you see yourself, you know, garnering interest maybe in track and field to put, to run at the next level or compete over there? Yes, I want to try to do both when I get to college. I want to try to um, play football in the fall and run track in the spring. I got to ask you, what's your event? What's your favorite event? My favorite event is either between the 200 or the 400, but I'm going to try to run more 100 meters this year. So I think for everybody that's listening, in indoor, 200 is just one lap around and 400 is one lap around for outdoor. So you're just, you're someone that just loves to sprint and that's it. Yeah, I'm a sprinter, I'm definitely a sprinter. And I think that helps you on the field too. How have you grown as a player, not just speed wise, but I guess just mentally too, since last year? I mean, my confidence has definitely grew since last year. Cause last year I was um, fresh off an of injury. So I was just working my way back. But senior year, I knew what I wanted. I worked all off season and um, I just put the work on on the field and it shows. What would it mean to win a championship with this group of guys? It would mean a lot because half the team is leaving this year and I've been with these guys since my freshman year. We worked together, we suffered the losses, the wins, everything. And to bring a chip back to Mount would mean a lot to us and the coaching staff. You're watching the Varsity Media Sports Network, the home for New York high school sports. And also, Dan Collette, the back judge is Chris Jackson, the timer is Harry Shaw, the chain gang. James we thank John for that and just about set for the start of this one. We'll have the anthem first. We'll take a quick break. Bring it back with this double A2 championship game brought to you by Catholic Health and Long Island Elite Football. You're watching the Varsity Media Sports Network, the home for New York high school sports. 
At Catholic Health, when we see our island, we see extraordinary life. The most extraordinary of which is you. It's because our Catholic faith places the highest value on people, all people. It's the inspiration for our exceptional medical care with unmatched compassion. And it's why at Catholic Health, you're more than a patient. You're someone's family, best friend, and a neighbor to us all. Long live Long Island. We welcome you back to Mitchell Athletic Complex. Dylan Butler, Pat Godfrey here with you for the Double A2 Championship game. We welcome in our third member of our broadcast team, John Perez, about the contrasting styles here today. Guys, when you look at the coaching matchup in this game, you've got 60 years of experience between Chris Stevens and Mario Valentini, but two contrasting styles of play. When you look over at Xavier, they've been running the wing tee since Chris Steven has started, and in fact, that's just an old throwback style of play. Meanwhile, on the other side for Mount, a couple of years ago with enrollment down, Valentini felt that he had to change up the offense Kicking from the old uh, option offense five. to now the Many spread the offense, Warriors. and that's really helped enrollment and has incentivized kids to come to Mount, and not only that, it's helped them with their free-flowing offense. It's going to be interesting to see the two, difference in, two differences in styles of play this afternoon. Guys, we'll send it back up to you. Deep. Number four, Mount St. Michael. Number seven, Jabril Carter. Thanks, John. Just about set to go here. You see the Knights, they won the coin toss. They deferred to the second half. So it'll be Mount St. Michael on offense to start this game off. It is Benedetta Loria, number five, kicking off for Xavier. And it looks like deep for Mount. I believe Carter is back there as well as Travis Anganya. Here is the kickoff. Double A2 championship game is underway. Carter feels the opening kickoff, runs towards the Xavier sideline, and he's taken down just outside the 30-yard line. So Mount St. Michael offense getting ready to get, step onto the field, led by their junior quarterback, Mark Piercy. You see the numbers. 54% of his Passes have been completed, 1,380 yards, 12 touchdowns, 7 interceptions. He leads the AA2 in passing yards. And you see the carries as well, 51 for 280 and 10. Here's Pearson, rolls out. First pass is nearly <laughs> intercepted and in and out of the hands, Pat. And I'm not... Not sure if that was the read that Mark Pearson wanted to make coming out the gate there. Very fortunate that that one isn't picked off and taken the other way. And that was our defensive player to watch there. It was Sean Donahue nearly uh, getting the pick. We'll meet the Mount offense after this next play, which is a second and 10 from the 33-yard line. Pearson hands off. That's Tyler Bobe, the junior running back up the middle for a few. Let's meet those Mountaineers now on offense. Joining Pearson and Bobe. There you see them. You got Carter, Wheeler, Samuels, and Agonye as your wide receivers up front. It's Pirovic, Simpson, Roberts, Hatwood, and Lucase for head coach Mario Valentini in his 39th season at the helm. 
Interception at the 42 yard line and blowing a tire there. I think that was Donahue again and it was. Donahue let one get away on first down right there on third down comes up with a huge interception to give momentum early on to the Knights. Here's our player to watch here and you'll see great read by the backer just reading Mark Pearson's eyes steps in front and if he doesn't start stumbling there that might have gone for six. Turf monster <laughs> got Donahue there from the pick six so terrific field position now for Xavier and their single wing offense from the Mount St. Michael, 23-yard line. Zalatovsky is the two-back. He's the guy who's going to get the ball, runs it right side, has blocker up the field. He'll go end zone. Touchdown, Xavier. Shane Zalatovsky. What a play right there. And you'll see Zalatovsky gets a great block from his fullback, Medai Mara. Really great job, and you'll just see right behind his blocker, number 26, you'll see Mariah out in front, lays the key block, and Zalatowski able to strut in untouched. Yeah, that's the, for Zalatowski, his 13th rushing touchdown of the year, and for Mehdi Mera, that is his thing, man. He's a, Originally from France, we'll detail his story. It's a remarkable one for sure, but uh, that's where he's at his best, I think, out in space and open field uh, and just laying the wood down on those blocks. The PAT is up and good, and just like that, one play, seven points. Xavier, they capitalize on the interception, and they take the early lead. Don't blink on the... Uh championship Saturday here Dylan only 53 seconds into the game and Xavier with uh, about as good of a start as they could have asked for here you love the smile there by Zalatovsky man the senior from Manhattan listen a year ago he played corner for the second half of the season he's athletic enough to do that you know but again in their physical offense that they run he's going to get hit 25 30 times a game so you want to try to rest him on defense and Zalatovsky as Chris Stevens, the Xavier coach, said he's our best run-pass combo guy. You know, not the biggest, 5'9", 150, but, you know, as we'll talk about, I'm sure, a lot today, it's not about the size of the dog, right, but the fight in the dog. Without a doubt, great start for Zalatovsky there. And though he's not the best passer in the Catholic League, he is a very dynamic option coming out of that two-back spot. Carter fields the kickoff at the 10. And again, tries to run it towards the Xavier sideline. He's had now back-to-back -back pretty good returns for Mount as the Mountaineers now uh, needing to move the football. We heard the words from Mario Valentini about making the most out of your possessions. We don't know how much we're going to get the ball today, make the most, and obviously the troubles on their first drive, they want to rectify that here, have a short memory. Uh, and get going here on their second drive. Especially when you're playing against Xavier, you know, with, with their offensive approach, the way that they run the ball, there's not a lot of margin for error on the offensive side of the ball today for Mount St. Michael. Quality run on first down. That's Tyler Bobay, the junior from Yonkers. We didn't get a chance last possession to meet the Xavier defense. Let's do so now. Up front for Xavier, you've got Young, St. Cyrus, and Della Vecchia, along with Knobloch, Yuxel, Scariano, and Franchak. Another run up the middle, continuing their defense. You've got Donahue, as we mentioned. He's the one who had the INT. Tomas Diaz as free safety, and Robert Allen at corner. A manageable third and one. Mount doing here what they were hoping to do on their first drive. Absolutely. I know it's early on in the game, but it feels like already this is a big situation to try and move the chains. Don't want to give the ball right back to that Xavier O. Another handoff, and this time the stop defensively. It looked like Amir Yuxel was in there, the junior from Manhattan. Big tackle there for Yuxel. Really nice job by the backer here and a 
a key third down scenario. Looks like he was able to stop Mount just short, but we're going to await that measurement. Yeah, Amir Yuxel, 6'1", 190 from Manhattan. Uh, Chris Stevens, their entertaining head coach, said he came back from the Aegean after the summer looking like a Turkish sailor from the Aegean Sea. He had that scruffy mustache and beard, the long curly hair. Had a pick six against Kennedy in the semifinals. Stevens was also quick to point out as Mount does actually get the first down. Stevens was able to point out, too, that Yuxel's mom brought back some of those great Turkish delights. So Stevens was a very happy man when he saw Yuxel return from his GNC journey. I mean, food, that's the fastest way into any football <laughs> guy's heart. So s smart one right there. So Mount, uh, a, a big thing there for them just to move the chains you, you got another set of downs here and you get the ball out towards midfield give them a chance to settle in a little bit here now the rush up the middle inside the 40 or just past the 45 yard and then that's Bo Bay again had a really good game against Zavarian in the semifinals which was probably his most productive game of the season on the year 90 carries for 438 yards and a touchdown normally you see a bit of a rotation uh, at the running back spot, Bo Bay being part of that, Franklin Dominguez, and Jonathan Otu as well. Bo Bay doing a really nice job this year. Has the ability to, to find a hole, be patient, keep his feet moving. Pearson, jump ball, trying to find Carter. Good recognition by Xavier there. They brought the double team, and the ball was knocked down. Looked like making that play was James Franchock, 38. Really nice job by Franchock, who actually got involved on special teams earlier as well with a couple of tackles on the opening kickoffs. But, uh, you know, not a great idea throwing it to double coverage there. I know you want to get the ball out in space to number seven, Jabril Carter. That situation, a little bit of an uh, ill-advised throw. Pearson back to pass. Slings it over the middle. That's intercepted as well. Again. Sean Donahue, again, we, we told you to keep an eye on this guy. We didn't realize how important he'd be over this first four minutes, but his second pick and a huge momentum swing back to Xavier to stymie the drive for Mount St. Michael. You'll see this right here. Mark Pearson just staring down the receiver, and as a great, strong safety would, Sean Donahue reads the eyes of the quarterback, steps in front, and gives momentum. Back to Xavier. Xavier with the ball at their own 39-yard line and a flag there as it looked like Mount flag. jumped on that far side of the line. But the funny thing, man, about Donahue is Steven said we didn't play him last year. We were like, what are we doing? How are we not playing this guy? Suddenly this year, fast forward, he's, the, he's uh, going to be, he's their nominee for Defensive Player of the Year in this conference. And it just goes to show how rapidly sometimes development can occur at the high school level. Sometimes a guy as a junior just isn't there yet, and as a senior is a dominant player. You've seen that play out for Sean Donahue in 2022. So first and five now, and the run up the middle. A short gain. Zalatovsky with the run again. Let's meet the Xavier offense and again this is all you know the positions that you'll see here are very very uh, unique shall we say <laughs> to this single wing. Zalatovsky is your two back. Merov your full back Gallagher at wing back Anthony DeHow at your power back you've got Young at tight end Arteca Batista your three guard Edwards your center Matty Lane five guard Chris O'Halloran Gannon your sixth tackle. Good job defensively there by Mount to ra round out your Xavier offense. It's Michael Miodoshevsky at seven tackle and Aiden Honig at tight end. And for those just tuning in, yes, we are still watching American football. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a great synergy at Xavier, man. The, the, the school there in lower Manhattan is a rugby national powerhouse. They've won a few different national championships playing rugby, and they play football with a rugby-like mentality. 
you know, often we talk about the transferability of different uh, athletes between sports. We talk about different baseball players who are able to have success on the gridiron. But you think about a sport that translates into running the ball, nothing better than rugby. Betty Mera with the run up the middle, but he was stopped by Hernandez. So it's a fourth and three now for the Knights. Dylan, I think this strikes me as a uh, you know a go for it type situation. If you're Chris Stevens, got the ball out near the 50 yard line, and you know you're here in the championship game, got to feel good about your offense's ability to get three yards in a key situation. And it certainly looks to be that way. Oh, look at that, <laughs> Xavier! They don't even need to run a play with all that movement up front. Ultimately, Mount jumps. Yeah, and that's going to be a frustrating one for Coach Valentini over there. And in, in his long career at Mount, he's really seen it all, but going to want to calm those guys down a little bit over on the sideline, getting a little antsy on fourth down, and there costs him. And that's been the biggest concern this week is this offense because, one, they didn't play during the regular season, Pat, and no one plays this way, right? So to get your scout team ready for this offense that was a huge challenge that's a terrific defensive play though a big hit for a loss that was Jonathan O2 let's meet the Mount starting defense today along with O2 up front we mentioned before you got Cadenhead Edwards Palmer and Caldwell usually a three four off a defense but because of the running attack you're stacking a box with four big uh, linemen your middle linebackers are Hernandez and Outlaw Butler love that name 2 as well as Fuentes are your linebackers. Bustamante is a corner along with Greenaway. And Aiden Wiseman is your free safety. And a rare pass. A dump over the top. And that one was complete. So Zalatovsky finds the big man. Number 44, Anthony DeBoe. And you know, I love this right here. If Xavier is going to throw the ball, it's going to look... <laughs> Something like that, you know, just dump it off a couple yards in the air to the fullback, and DeBo does a really good job. You know, he's 5'11", 230, and once he gets the ball rumbling, tough to bring down, and nice little pickup. That was Zelotovsky's 11th completion of the year. I think Dante Torres in tonight's final game will have 11 in the first four minutes <laughs> of that first quarter. Another run, another good stop there by Mount. So after some early struggles, the Mountaineers seem to be – Riding the ship, and you see the tackle there by number six, Anthony Hernandez. We called his name out already a few times. A junior middle linebacker from the Bronx a year ago, was a slot receiver, came back. They worked him into a linebacker role, and that's one of the storylines uh, for Mount Pat this year is guys into new roles, learning positions, and obviously after you know, eight, nine games of the season, they're a little bit more comfortable in their skin and their new positions. Yeah, you know, just looking at their defense, there's definitely a lot of youth and inexperience coming into this season. They're playing a lot of different underclassmen, but throughout the course of this year, those guys have stepped up to the plate, and they're, uh, you know, they're playing like it. Fourth and seven. Xavier does the same thing. There was a flag, but before the flag... Chris Stevens calls timeout. So bailout a little bit there for the head coach in because uh, they did get Mount to jump. And you wonder maybe if they were close to possibly uh, running out of time there, uh, the Knights of Xavier. You know, I, th I think that's the kind of insight or the foresight that you get throughout what is it for Coach Stevens, 31 years at Xavier, you know. Great job coming in and, and bailing his team out. And what could have been a, uh, a costly mistake on fourth down. Yeah, he's, again, the disciple of that single wing. There's uh, fewer and fewer around this country running this offense, and uh, he flies that flag proudly. That is for sure. So off that penalty, actually, I'm sorry, no penalty because there was a timeout. So fourth and seven, and Mount playing this, looking, expecting this to be a punt. And it is nearly blocked as well. Maybe it was a deflection because it took an angle out toward the sideline. So Mount St. Michael, after a, a positive defensive stop, Pat will now look to get their offense going again. 
They'll actually have decent field position here, starting the ball on the 29 after the uh, net, I believe, about 14, 15 yard punt. So, despite the couple of mistakes early on from Pearson, Mount still very much in a position to, to march down and, and even this one up. Chilly, windy morning here at Mitchell Athletic Complex. Handoff, far side, oh, nothing doing there for Franklin oh. Dominguez. He escapes, but there were already whistles there, so that's going to be a loss for Dominguez. You know, Dominguez thought that he should have been able to get away with this one. They, they called forward progress, but could have actually gone for a big gain had they not made that call. Really nice job, I believe. It was Donahue again getting in the backfield, causing that TFL, getting Mount behind the sticks early in the downs. And you can see the look there of Dominguez, too. He's a different kind of runner, right? He's more of that power back than Bobe, who's more of that guy who wants to jet it to the outside with his speed. So a loss of four there for Mount St. Michael. Second and 14. Oh, a little missed coverage there. Pearson was trying to hand off, just does a smart job there in throwing it to his bench. But you could see there, Pat, looking to hand off with nobody there to hand off to. Yeah, it looked like a busted play from the start. Kudos to Mark Pearson to just have the wherewithal to get out of the pocket and throw it out of bounds. But sets up a third and long type situation that I'm sure Mount was looking to avoid early in this drive. And one thing, too, that... Mario Valentini told us leading into this game was a guy like Travis Agonye, number 18, he's not maybe seeing enough of the ball, not getting enough looks with so many of them going to Carter. A handoff there on third and long, and the Xavier defense. It was Dominguez, the rusher, and they got pushed back. Donahue again, part of the tackling crew, along with James Franchock. Xavier defense rallies to the ball, not getting fooled on that draw play on third down and smothers out the Mountaineer attack. So just brings out the first punt for Mount today. That's Aiden Wiseman, the senior from Yonkers. To do so, you've got Zalatovsky and Diaz deep for the Knights. It is a short punt. Get out of the way, anyone wearing a Xavier jersey, because you're going to get terrific field position. So another uh, situation where Xavier gets a short field, it's hard enough to deal with their single wing, Pat, but you give them the field position like that, and uh, you are really flirting with trouble. Exactly. You know, uh, the two punts kind of net out right there. I think both uh, sub-15 yard net punts, and Gives Xavier great field position. This is really a situation that Xavier loves being in. If you give them good field position and, uh, and a small lead, then they, they can hang on to that all day long. They can run, run the ball down your throat. So a uh, precarious situation for Mount. First and 10 from the 40-yard line. There's the cut inside, the bounce outside as well. Another big run by number three, Shane Zalatovsky. And you got to love Zalatovsky right here, just lowering his shoulder to finish off the run. He's not your standard quarterback, everybody. Following his blockers up here, and you'll see as he advances onto the second level, lowers that shoulder, and boom, right over Aiden Wiseman to get a couple extra yards. Got to love that mentality out of, a, uh, out of a senior quarterback. He'll get 15 on that first down run. So Xavier, first down at their... Mount 25, they already have a 7-0 lead looking to add to it. Zalatovsky fakes the handoff, breaks a tackle, and he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Xavier, and it is Shane Zalatovsky again. Zalatovsky just having himself a day so far here at Mitchell Field. You'll see, you know, we talked early on in this game about the importance of sound gap responsibility here. Can't just fly upfield playing D-line. You'll see number 75, Nick Palmer from Mount, get a little bit over-anxious. Flies upfield, plays right into the hands of that Xavier offense. And Zalatovsky's gone for the touchdown. The PAT kick 
is up and it is good. It is all Xavier in this first quarter. The Knights with a 14-0 lead over Mount St. Michael. You're watching this Catholic AA2 championship game presented by Catholic Health on the Varsity Media Sports Network. You're watching the Varsity Media Sports Network, the home for New York high school sports. High school football fans, Varsity Media is bringing exciting, exclusive content to you for the 2022 season. Introducing the Varsity Media Pass, available on iOS and Android. Accessible all season long, the Varsity Media Pass features game highlights, weekly podcasts. A clash of styles, out to talk if you love those differing styles, right? Top 10 plays of the week, player interviews, and so much more. Head to varsitymediapass.com to download the app and start enjoying content only Varsity Media can bring. We welcome you back to Mitchell Athletic Complex. It is the double A2 championship game presented by Catholic Health. Dylan Butler, Pat Godfrey, and we spoke about the conditions a moment ago, right? A little bit windy, as you could see uh, the kickoff attempt go off. You know, Dylan, wonder how much of a factor that's going to be here today. The high won't even, uh, won't even hit 40 here in Nassau County. So you know that ball feels like a brick for anybody kicking it, anybody catching it. Loria and Carter again, the Carter, kickoff the return man, and he gets it out to about the 28-yard line. Kinsey on the tackle. Nice tackle there by Charles Kinsey for Xavier. And this is going to be a big drive right here for, for Mount St. Michael to try and kind of steady the ship a little bit. You know, they haven't gotten off to the start that they wanted. We're able to make some, some decent progress offensively at points on their prior drives, but really just going to have to clean up those mistakes. Can't afford to turn the ball over again in the hole by two touchdowns in just the first quarter. So here's Mount, first and 10. And this has been kind of their most successful uh, play to this point, having oh, Tyler yeah, Bobay run up the middle. Yeah, you know, Bobay is certainly not the biggest guy in the league. He's only about 140 pounds or so, but he just does a good job once he gets the ball of, of finding that little crease, getting whatever's there, and, and falling forward. So that's been you know a successful play early on. Yeah, again, it's a little bit by committee, but he is no doubt that lead rusher. 90 carries coming into this game with 400 and 38 yards for the junior from Yonkers. So a gain of about four there on first down. Another handoff, another good job cutting inside and falling forward for Bo Bay, who will get to the 35-yard line. Another nice tackle there by Amir Yuxel. Talked about him earlier. Getting really involved on the defensive side of the ball for Xavier. Some new personnel here for the Mount inside this final minute of the first quarter of this double A2 championship game. A pair of touchdown runs by Shane Zelotowski has the Knights leading it 14-0. Here's Pearson, good cut inside, gets a great block to upfield. Pearson gets it to the outside, gets out toward midfield. Really, really nice play here from Mark Pearson. Starts off with a play action. Looked like he might have had a uh, little run pass option here. You'll see fakes the handoff, rolls out. This is a really nice wrinkle to Pearson's game. You know, he's been very productive on the ground all year long with 10 rushing touchdowns. And that's the first real glimpse of his feet that we've gotten here today at Mitchell Field. Yeah, the funny thing about a lot of those carries and those touchdowns, they're, they haven't been design plays. It's been sort of him trying to do just this, get out of trouble. There's his first completed pass, and it's a big one as well. Over the middle, up the field, and down to about the 10-yard line. Travis Agonye. Mario Valentini said, we got to feed him a little bit more. I would say so. Excuse me, no, 16. It was Kyle Samuels. Kyle Samuels, really good job here. He's 6'2", 190 pounds. And you see once the big boy gets the ball, 
He's tough to bring down. Takes Sean Donahue for a little bit of a ride there at the end of that play. But, boy, what an injection of life just when they needed it for that Mountaineer offense. So the Mount first time today in the red zone. They start here at the 11, but they won't get that first play here with the play, oh, excuse me, with the quarter coming to an end. So Xavier in their single wing, the old school look, Shane Zalatovsky with two touchdown runs. He's got the Knights leading 14-0 after the first quarter. You're watching this Catholic AA2 championship game presented by Catholic Health right here on the Varsity Media Sports Network. You're watching the Varsity Media Sports Network, the home for New York high school sports. At Catholic Health, when we see our island, we see extraordinary life. The most extraordinary of which is you. It's because our Catholic faith places the highest value on people, all people. It's the inspiration for our exceptional medical care with unmatched compassion. And it's why at Catholic Health, you're more than a patient. You're someone's family, best friend, and a neighbor to us all. Long live Long Island. We welcome you back to Mitchell Athletic Complex. Dylan Butler, Pat Godfrey here with you. Start of the second quarter of the Catholic AA2 championship game. It was all Xavier in the first quarter, but as this second quarter about to start, it is the Mountaineers looking to get in the end zone, and they do just that. Jonathan O2 with the touchdown run, and the Mountaineers are on the scoreboard. Just what the doctor ordered right here. What a response for that Mount St. Michael offense driving down the field and puncturing it punctuating it with a touchdown right here. You'll see Justin Roberts, the center, pull out, create a nice crease right there, and then boom. Jonathan Otu does all the rest. Great response to bring it within one score. So Dahadi O'Connor on to kick the PAT, and it will not get over that. So it's a missed PAT for Mount St. Michael, and it has been a long road for Xavier. Only a win a year ago, and now in the championship game. They're looking for the Triple Crown. More on that, our own John Perez. Guys, what a tale of two years it's been for the Xavier Football Club. Looking at last year, they were 1-8, and eight, and this truly is a worst-to-first story for the Xavier Knights and you looking at last year's roster it was a very young team but also the reason for the struggles is because Xavier fields a nationally ranked rugby team in which a lot of the football personnel Zella plays Topsky. for and because of that Cole. reasoning Chris Stevens didn't have the typical off-season training Gallagher, program that he would have had it had there not been the COVID-19 pandemic so coming into this year it was all systems go a normal training regimen and I spoke to some of the players earlier this week and they said that that's been the difference this year just getting all their P's in a Q and just getting straight in line and that's the reason for their success has been the extra preparation time and also just executing and a familiarity with the offense. Guys, let's send it back to you. Thank you, John. Appreciate that and nothing like a little Thanksgiving Day football man and Xavier and Ford and Prep, that is the granddaddy of them all in New York City, that is for sure. Off of that 0-2 touchdown, and it's now Xavier looking to get going on offense. And as John just talked about, the Triple Crown for Xavier is a league championship, which Xavier has checked that box, right? Winning double-A-2 regular season. Then you win the championship game at Mitchell Athletic Complex, and then you win Turkey Bowl. All right. right? So that is a difficult Triple Crown to get, certainly uh, Fordham Prep would love to uh, make sure that does not happen in the 99th edition of the Turkey Bowl between those two teams. You know, you just think about the incredible work that's gone in by all the guys in this program, you know, to really turn things around. They lose their season during COVID, one of only two programs in the New York City Catholic League to, to lose that. And then, uh, you know, turn around, have a one and eight season last year. For them to be the number one seed in this Catholic AA2 division, and potentially with a chance to win it 
all right here today. It's just a, an incredible effort from this entire Knights program. That was Mehdi Mera, the junior from France, with the run up the middle. And what a great story he is. Mehdi's dad was the military attaché to the French UN diplomat. He is a colonel in the French army. Mehdi Mera only knew playing rugby back in France. So uh, this American football is another jump offside by the Mountaineers on that movement by Xavier. But this American football is new to Mehdi Mera. And think about, too, the differences in rugby and football. A lot of his running was straight up on rugby and and Stevens was trying to tell him he and his staff were like listen Betty you gotta get you gotta get down you gotta lower your shoulder you gotta fall forward and bring that physicality and after a little bit of a heart to heart with his dad this season uh, Mera has answered the call in a big way yeah I mean the way that that guy runs certainly has learned how to use some leverage also a big contributor on the blocking side of the offense so you know, that, that cross-board transferability is, is definitely big there between, between rugby and football. Zalatovsky, another run for Xavier. And that's the thing, with Mera now becoming uh, more physical as well, and, and, and you look at, too, the way they would block, right? You can get Mera and Dabao. Dabao at 5'11", 230, solid at your power back. Now you've got Zalatovsky and Gavin Gallagher. Gallagher we've not really even seen yet, right? Touch the ball. But he's that guy who could break it for an 85-yard touchdown. So you get those lead blockers. You get a guy like that running the football. As there's Zalatovsky getting pushed backward. Ball carried by Zalatovsky. That was a good by tackle Justin by Justin Roberts. Roberts, one of those few guys for the mount going both ways. He's the starting center. Kind of because he's the guy who could actually snap the ball uh, in their spread offense and Roberts he's maybe a little bit better here on the defensive side at on the D-line yeah Roberts having a really good year and uh, you know as, as a guy who went both ways on the O-line and D-line in high school I can you know definitely say it's, it's a real difficult job you got to have the endurance to be out there and you know really impressive to see that guy contribute on both sides there is Gavin Gallagher getting out to the 50 a solid tackle there Luis uh, Ferran. Luis Ferran on that one right there. The uh, the senior corner fly. Oh, that last offensive drive was uh, was very oh, strong for them. Goal. And then it's nice to see on the defensive side of the football them just gaining a little bit of comfortability against the really weird looks that you get presented with when playing against the Xavier offense. First and 10 from the 26-yard line for Mount St. Michael. Again, second year. And the spread offense, low snap this time, and the handoff. And again, how many times are we going to call number 22's name, man? Sean Donahue getting another tackle. That senior from Queens, man, he, he's got that savvy, that nasty streak. He understands the game. He's a guy who plays everywhere, right? He backs up at power back, at two back, at wing back. Kind of a plug and play type of guy, Sean Donahue, but... Uh, has clearly found his niche here on the defensive side. It's, it's really amazing, too, because, you know, he's listed as a defensive back. He's a strong safety on paper, but you see him flying up and making a lot of plays inside the box, too. Uh, not a lot of defensive backs that give you that kind of dual functionality. That was Matt Scariano, 25, on the tackle for Xavier. Scariano, a guy, man, how about this, a 96 average. With 16 AP courses and honors, he's got a 34 out of 35 on the ACT. A captain of the wrestling team, he starts in the rugby team, and then he lives in the weight room on every other minute that he that he has in a 24-hour day. Man, Scariano uh, is a beast. Look at this fourth down and completion to Carter, and that'll be a first down from Mount. That's the first time you know we've seen them be able to get the ball successfully out on the perimeter to Jabril Carter. Big contribution there on the third and long, just what the doctor ordered. And, uh, you know, Pearson throws a strike. Once you get it out there to number seven, he'll do the rest. And Carter, the senior from Harlem, came in with 33 receptions on the season. A track runner. He started as a freshman at QB. Pearson sidearm, then another completion. 
And now Mount maybe cooking a little bit here. Another first down and another reception by Carter. Mount starting to gain a little bit of momentum here. They hit up Carter again. One thing worth noting when you're talking about Jabril Carter, he's averaging over 22 yards a catch on the season. So he's a big play guy by his nature. And that's really, really encouraging from any Mount St. Michaels fan seeing number seven get involved in this offense. First and 10 from the 48 yard line and a big rush up the middle by Bo Bay. You can see definitely a little bit of a pep in the step for Mount St. Michael here as they're moving. If I'm them, I'm keeping the foot on the gas. This hurry up seems to be working. You got Xavier on their heels. Stay in attack mode. A gain of six on first down for Bo Bay. Wonder if the change of directions is playing any factor here as they look a lot better through the air in the second quarter. Bobay, a burst up the middle, and they'll move the chains again. You know, we've said it before, but Bobay, certainly not the biggest guy in the world, 5'7", 135 pounds, but he just finds a way to run with good pad level, Leaning forward, falling forward, doing a great job of that today. First and 10 from the 36, Pearson back to pass, looking for his guy. There's Carter again, breaks a tackle, and Carter's in the end zone. Touchdown, Mount St. Michael. For the Mount St. Michael touchdown. Don't look now, but we got ourselves a ball game here at Mitchell Athletic Complex in Nassau County. Wow, Jabril Carter, I told you he had big playability there. Makes Xavier pay. Tomas Diaz can't get him wrapped up. And that's six. They missed the PAT before. You wonder here if you, if you go for two to get the tie, but then again, you're always chasing those points. So maybe the PAT is the way to go. Let's see how they line up. It's a tough calculus, right? You know, maybe you take the points if you feel confident that you'll get them. They showed going for two, but Mount will call timeout to talk things over. So already a, a big junction in this game here early on. It'll be interesting to see whether Mount St. Michael makes the more aggressive call and elects to try and tie this one up here in the second quarter. But for anybody who watched that first and thought we were looking at a blowout, you were sadly mistaken. <laughs> Fans, scan that QR code there you see in the bottom left of your screen to download the Yes Network's Emmy Award winning Yes app now. You can stream Nets and Yankees, high school games as well, lifetime shows, podcasts, and so much more. The Yes Network app, again, download it there on the bottom left side of your screen with that QR code. Mount looking to cap off a, a drive that really wouldn't have happened if it weren't for an aggressive fourth down. Go for it type call. And here, able to look to tie it up. Yeah, they'll look to try to get that two here. Hand off right side. And going nowhere. Pearson was pulled down by who else? <laughs> Number 22, Sean Donahue. <laughs> You know, Dylan, sometimes in this business you feel like you can grow a little bit repetitive, but boy, you know, number 22 has been everywhere today, and what a huge play on that two-point try for Mount St. Michael to, to stop him. And that's what I was saying before, right? It's, it's, a, it's a philosophy question a little bit, right, when, when you're on that sideline. Do you try to kick the PAT? Your first one didn't look too good, right? If you go for two, now you're constantly chasing it if you don't get it, right? And that's the case there for Mount um, so far, they've gotten in the end zone twice. They should be theoretically tied at this point, but they are down by two. You know, we always talk, it's a game of inches, and, uh, you know, this point after tries could be real consequential as we're looking to award a title here today. Tahiti O'Connor, the kick, fielded at the 15-yard line, and good job swarming there on special teams by 
the mount to make sure that it's a long field here for Xavier. If I'm Chris Stevens from Xavier, I'm looking at that 547 left on the clock here in this first half, and I'm hoping that my offense can system systematically march down this field against Mount St. Michael's and kind of give a counter punch after those couple scoring drives put together by the Mountaineers. Xavier, a first and 10 from their own 26-yard line. Flip to Gallagher, running towards his own bench. Cuts it inside, and he'll get past the 30-yard line. So Gavin Gallagher, number 41. And listen, it took him a little while there to learn that position, that wing back position, but he's got great wheels. He's given Xavier another gear. Not only is he fast, but he's got that great counter punch ability as well. And probably most importantly for anybody who gets touches also has a great understanding of how to block that front side edge. A gain of five on first down and again, some movement and this one's actually gonna go against Xavier. And you know, that kind of presents the, uh, the double-edged sword of some of these odd wing T type looks that we're seeing from Xavier. If you're not f functioning and really firing on all levels, a small mistake can lead you going backwards there. So we've seen Mount St. Michael's pay a couple times for jumping at the line of scrimmage. There Xavier pays. So it brings up a second and nine from the 27 yard line inside the final five minutes of this first half. It looks like that was Zelotowski again, spinning and turning, but good recognition there by the Mount defense to get him for a stop. You know, just to kind of underscore the importance of that penalty there, Right now, Xavier looking at a third and nine situation. That's really not a comfortable point for their offense. They, they like to chip away on the early downs, bring it to third and manageable. Going to have to get a little bit creative here to figure out a third and nine. And yeah, no gain on that play, so. You see that movement again, probably looking to go back the other way again, and uh, that's has hurt Mount in this game. This time they don't. Oh, what a terrific tackle. Zalatovsky was the carrier, but he went nowhere. Tyler Cadenhead, 56, was in there, as was Malik Outlaw Butler, the middle linebacker, maybe the best name thus far <laughs> of the day. You love your middle linebacker to have the last name Outlaw, man. <laughs> Outlaw Butler, he was born to play the position. 100%. 6'1", 170-pound Bronx native flies back there and gives his offense the chance to get back out on the field, hope to claim the lead for the first time here today. Yeah, momentum suddenly. There's a terrific punt. I was about to say, looking to go for the guy from the Bronx, but a little bit of a fumble and uh, a fortunate ability there by Ferran just to hold on to that ball after booting it for a moment as Mount St. Michael will get back on the offense. Now it's gotta be feeling really good right now. Definitely some cause for, for concern there on the offensive side of the ball through the first quarter, but since then, they've cleaned up their play, efficiently gotten the ball out to their playmakers. Bo Bay's been a huge contributor, and then you just saw Jabril Carter. Look for them to get the ball back in the hands of number seven as they try to march down and score before half. Trips right. Another handoff inside, and a big run on first down. Up the middle goes Tyler Bo Bay. And once again, just bringing the wood. You know, you could tell a lot about a running back by the way that he finishes off his carries. And, you know, he's fallen forward for one, two, three extra yards every single time. See right here, following his center, number 50 up the middle. Does a really good job reading the block and then just finishing with violence there. Love to see it. 50, Justin Roberts. We'll talk more about him as this game goes along. Pearson. Excuse me, it was Bo Bay again pushing forward. Scariano and Yuxel, your tacklers. 
You mentioned Scariano before. Another one of those legacy guys, right? His dad, Paul, uh, was coached by Chris Stevens in 1989. He was a linebacker, now part of the Xavier Board of Trustees. They won the division that year. They were 6-4. and four. Steven says, look, at worst, we lose these two games. We're 6-4. and four. Who's the better Scariano? <laughs> we don't know, but if we win either of these two games, sorry, Dad, it's Matt. I'm sure Paul was a great football player, but hard to imagine he could compete with his son on academics, you know, at that 96 average. I'm sure Matt Scariano is going to be doing a lot of big things beyond the football field in the coming years. No doubt about it. Parents and athletes, now that the season is ending, you can order a college recruiting video from Varsity Media. Our video will help you stand out from the crowd. You may save money in college tuition and help you land a spot on the team. Bio section, editing effects, music, and more. Email jeff at varsitymedia.net by Thanksgiving and get 15% off. Yeah, Dylan, this time of year, highlight tape season, nothing really more important than getting your best foot forward as you're trying to reach out to college coaches. I know that my highlight film was invaluable doing that outreach, and you know, Varsity Media could just get you over the top. Sometimes all it requires that little edge, and here at Varsity Media, we help you get it. So a second and seven here for Mount in the final 2.07 of this first half. You remember too, Xavier won the coin toss to start the game. They deferred to the second half, so the Knights will get the ball coming out of halftime. Bobay again, a first down and more to the Xavier 40 yard line. Bobay keeps rolling and you know, kind of interesting to see this Xavier defense struggling a little bit with just some standard gap schemes coming from the, the Mount St. Michael attack. You'd think that they get a ton of reps and maintaining gap responsibility throughout practice, but you know, struggling against what Tyler Bobay is throwing at them right now. And if you can get Bobay running like that and get the ball to Carter like you have, that's a pretty solid recipe as it went back to Bobay again, but a solid tackle there by Yuxel. On the tackle. Second and eight, Mount St. Michael at the Xavier 39. So, time to probably start thinking about time a little bit as you're managing the clock for Mount St. Michael. You know, been doing a really good job running the ball, but they're going to have to transition into some sort of hurry up with only 113 left on the clock. Second and eight, there's Carter. He's got a blocker up the field, cuts inside of that blocker. Good pursuit there by the Knights. Turn around the reception. Looks like... A flag, though, as perhaps a penalty there against Cam Wheeler. Flag on the play. That up block. Yeah, you know, you appreciate, as we see this holding penalty get called, you appreciate Cameron Wheeler doing a really good job on the sideline, trying to block for Jabril Carter out in space. But you'll see at the very end, he does a little bit of a wrestling move, gets the takedown, and when the refs see you grabbing a little bit out in space. They're going to ding you. To this point, outside of the, those few jumps, right, off of, off of uh, Xavier's movement, it's been a clean game for both teams. And, and that's especially important, I think, for Mount, just uh, to not back oh, themselves yeah. up. Here they do, though, their first holding penalty. And how many times, Pat, in the high school football game do we see these penalties become so debilitating? Uh, they, just, they just take the air out of a drive and really limits – your ability as an offensive coordinator to, uh, to run your offense, you know. Uh, no, nobody is planning on second and 18 type situations. And, you know, Mount has had some success throwing the ball here in the second quarter. But you know what? A lot tougher to throw the ball when everybody on defense knows you're doing so. So one of those obvious passing type situations with the clock being concerned and way behind the sticks, we'll see how they do. And I think they've got to burn a timeout here as they were – nearing being uh, running out of the play clock there. Yeah, I'm sure for Coach Valentini, a little frustrating getting behind the sticks here and having to burn a timeout when the clock still is a consideration within this half. 
But they're going to look to pick up some chunks of yardage here, see if they can try and punch something in, only being down two. A terrific legacy of winning at the Mount. And there you see some of their championships. You go back to 1992 and those 90s, man, they were one of the best in the AAA, right? There was no such thing at the time of, you know, Iona and Stepanak being the best. It was, they were indeed top of the mountain. You see 1996 and seven, they go back to back against St. Anthony's and their last championship, an emotional one there as well in 2009, winning that AA championship, beating Cardinal Hayes on Thanksgiving morning. Second and 18, Pearson flings it, finds his man right at the sticks. Who else? Agent Carter himself. Well, I mentioned it earlier that Jabril Carter is usually good for about 20 on every catch, and just what they needed there, just what they got. Jabril Carter, great job on an excellently delivered ball by Mark Pearson to move the chains. I'd say that was a pretty good timeout. Yeah, works out. <laughs> First and 10 from the 30-yard line. Pearson fakes the handoff, rolls right, under pressure, slings it, finds his man, and oh man, Carter was open, he saw the end zone, just couldn't get those feet untangled, but he goes out of bounds at the eight yard line. Really fortunate here for Tomas Diaz, number six, for Xavier. You'll see he tries to jump this route, Gets a little greedy going for the interception, mistimes it, and fortunate that Carter steps out of bounds to save the touchdown if you're a Knights fan. Timeout, You know, and just, Dylan, one thing I really want to shout out is, uh, you know, how impressed I am with, with Mark Pearson and his ability to kind of settle down um, after a suboptimal start. You know, no quarterback wants to get out the gate in a championship game and throw two interceptions on your opening couple of drives. But since then, Pearson's been remarkably efficient. He's put the ball where it needs to be. We've seen him do some stuff with his legs, and he's really just letting his star senior receiver, Jabril Carter, shine here in this second quarter. Speaking about shining, how about those shining nights of Xavier? Those are the championships for the Knights. They won the A. Back then, there was no championship game, so you just kind of win your division, right? Same as 89. You go back to 96, you won the A against Holy Trinity and the A against St. John the Baptist. They won double A in 12 and then in 15. That was that 12 was that sandy year, that special emotional championship win by those guys. And in 15, you beat Christ the King 28 to 25. Yeah, you know, these are both programs that feel like they can compete at a higher level. But you know what? The first step in doing that is getting back to winning championships. Pearson looks end zone and he did have a man just kind of under through the intended target, which was Cam Wheeler. Yeah, this one just kind of gets away from Mark Pearson a bit. Luckily, second down, they got plenty of time. I know I was saying time is a consideration, but when you move the ball as quickly as they just did, plenty of time here with three downs to try and punch it in to go ahead at half. Mario Valentini gets the play and gives the Pearson you do have options here, right? I mean, you, Bo Bay has run the ball so well, and you found Carter. Bo Bay is that lone back. Excuse me, 20 is the back now. It's 0-2. Pearson didn't get a chance to pitch it, and he was taken down hard. Who else but uh, Sean Donahue right there. Scariano as well. Hurry up here from Mound. They've got to just down the football. Scariano and Donahue were there two there as, uh, again, a difficult situation there for Mount. Xavier will talk things over as you burn a down. Yeah, you know. Now you're at fourth and goal. That was a bit of a, uh, a mismanaged situation, you know, and obviously the risk of running the ball there on second down is the fact that you could get tackled inbounds. That happens there. They have to rush up, spike the ball, and now all of a sudden you're either looking at, you know, uh, fourth and goal from the 10 to try and punch in a touchdown or going back to your kicking game, which has obviously been suspect, putting them in this predicament of being down two points. So, you know, while I know Mount St. Michael would love to go into the half with a lead, three points in this situation, not necessarily easy. 
So here we go off the timeout. 14 seconds left in the first half. This is an and goal situation. So Mount will here look to, for the field goal. This one will be a 26 yard attempt. Kick is up and that one is good. Is good. Great job there too, just to bounce back by O'Connor, man. He missed that PAT before. He goes towards those two same uh, goal posts and he fires through that 26 yard field goal. And all of a sudden down 14, nothing. The Mount has taken a 15 to 14 lead. Yeah, 15 unanswered points from, from Mount St. Michael and just hell of a job there by O'Connor in the kicking game. Um, you know, we've mentioned earlier, it's, it's tough kicking in this environment, only about 38 degrees outside with considerable wind. So a lot of different factors working against you, but hey, you know what, able to cross the uprights and they're gonna be really happy to potentially go into halftime right here, up by one after an atrocious start to this game. 15-14 to lead for Mount. And again, it is Xavier with the ball coming out. So if you are Mount, you are just wary here of the big play. O'Connor. Oh, and look at this. Off the hands. And is that going to be a safety? No, it was not a safety. I thought for a moment there he was going to be tackled at the end zone. But, man, Xavier uh, struggling there. And I think the best course of action here is just to get out of dodge here at the half and refocus to start the second half yeah you know if you're Chris Stevens going into halftime you're telling your team listen guys we didn't finish that half off the way that we wanted to but we also are going into halftime no we get the ball to start the third quarter and we play this game on our terms we can eat clock we can move the ball at will so far a lot of reasons to be positive on both sidelines right now and Zalatowski just goes down and takes a knee and that will do it for the first half the first quarter belonged to the boys from lower Manhattan as the Knights from Xavier jumped out to a 14 nothing lead the second quarter was all Mountaineers Mount with a 15 14 lead at the break you're watching this Catholic double-a2 championship game presented by Catholic Health right here on the Varsity Media Sports Network you're watching the Varsity Media Sports Network, the home for New York high school sports. At Catholic Health, when we see our island, we see extraordinary life. The most extraordinary of which is you. It's because our Catholic faith places the highest value on people, all people. It's the inspiration for our exceptional medical care with unmatched compassion. And it's why at Catholic Health, you're more than a patient. You're someone's family, best friend, and a neighbor to us all. Long live Long Island. it's time to order a college recruiting video from Varsity Media. Our video will help save you thousands of dollars in college tuition and land a spot on the team. Our videos include a bio section, editing effects to help you stand out on the field, music, and a digital link to send to college coaches. And if you act today, 
we are offering 15% off when you mention this ad, Good Through Thanksgiving. Contact Varsity Media today at 516-403-2050 or email jeff at varsitymedia.net. High school football fans, Varsity Media is bringing exciting, exclusive content to you for the 2022 season. Introducing the Varsity Media Pass, available on iOS and Android. Accessible all season long, the Varsity Media Pass features game highlights, weekly podcasts. A clash of styles, out in Satake, we love those differing styles, right? Top 10 plays of the week, player interviews, and so much more. Head to varsitymediapass.com to download the app and start enjoying content only Varsity Media can bring. Let me tell you something. If tomorrow wasn't promised, what would you give for today? Forget everything else. Forget everything else. Forget that there was any sunlight left. What would you spend today thinking about? Yourself or the man that's beside you? Or the man that you know you give everything in your heart for? We get one opportunity in life. One chance in life to do whatever you're going to do. To lay your foundation and to make whatever mark you're going to make. Whatever legacy you're going to leave. Leave your legacy. And it's found through effort. Wins and losses come a dime a dozen. But effort, nobody can judge effort. Because effort is between you and you. Effort ain't got nothing to do with nobody else. We welcome you back to Mitchell Athletic Complex halftime here of the AA2 championship game presented by Catholic Health. And it's the Mountaineers of Mount St. Michael, the number two seed, with a 15-14 lead over the Knights of Xavier, the top seed here in this division. There's a real tradition at Xavier among past and present Knights, and nobody embodies that more than Chris O'Halloran Gannon. Our John Perez caught up with Chris earlier this week. For you this year, I'd have to imagine the goal every year is to win a triple crown. And for those watching at home, that means winning the regular season, winning a league title, and then winning on Thanksgiving. One has already been checked off. You're looking for your second and then with Thanksgiving next week. I'm curious, is that verbalized as the weeks go on? Not the Thanksgiving game, but hey, let's keep this championship mentality. Yeah, it was definitely something that we talked about. Um, the only so that's only actually happened once. We did it in 2007. Um, that was when you know we were a top rushing team in the country. We were one of the best offensive teams in the country. We averaged like 45 points a game. So uh, it's only happened once. And throughout throughout you know this pretty much this whole year, we knew we wanted to make it to the championship. And you know, especially these past couple weeks after we did win the division. It's like, hey, we're one step, we're one step in, you know, check one off. We got, we got two more to go. It's, you know, obviously Thanksgiving is kind of its own thing. You know, we're thinking about just going one and zero every week, pretty much. So take the first game first, you know, have fun with the second almost. But it's definitely, uh, it's definitely would be a great accomplishment. Um, but I think, I think, you know, take take on the task at hand first before you worry about all the awards and stuff like that. We were speaking off mic about it's the 10 year anniversary of the 2012 Xavier championship team. And that was the quote, feel good story, Xavier Knights, uh, who won the championship. Uh, 12 of the players were uh, lost their house and displaced due to Hurricane Sandy. You said you speak to some of the guys and know some of the guys on the team. How inspiring are they to you? And, you know, do they still keep in touch with, with some guys on the team? Yeah, um, so I know one of the guys fairly well. Um, I used to I used to do work with him actually, like just doing odd jobs around where I live. Um, so he grew up in my neighborhood, and uh, he played offensive line for that team. And he was one of their one of one of you know a really good player. Uh, as for the guys that you know were harshly harshly affected by the storm, um, 
you know, we still have a lot of kids from that, you know, area. Three Two Point Rockaway are, are a large part of our team. It's a large part of our school. Um, a lot of the guys that are on the team now also lost their houses, also had to move away and come back. Uh, I know one of my buddies, he told me he moved to New Jersey for a year and then moved back to Breezy after, you know, stuff kind of settled down. But yeah, I mean, uh, coach talks about it all the time. He says that, you know, those 12 guys that were out of their houses, you know, they just, they, he asked if he wanted to cancel the season and they all just said no, because they said that season was all they had left. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's really, really inspiring. I think about it a lot. Um, I wasn't super affected by Sandy. I was like seven years old and my mom was pregnant with my sister. But, um, you know, we only lost power to our apartment. Uh, a lot of guys lost a lot. And, you know, those guys toughing it out, it really teaches us, you know, to stay tough and it shows what we're made of. You know, I think Xavier still is a tough school like that you know now even though it was 10 years ago so yeah and obviously the championship team then in 2015 lost in 2018 what would it mean to be a champion in 2022 with this group of guys i think it'd be awesome i mean those those seniors from last year you know the team that we went one and eight with i love each and every one of those guys but to win a championship with your team with you know the guys that i've been with for four years with the juniors that are, you know, helping us contribute now, it'd be it'd be something really special. Um, yeah, I mean, it, w it would mean the world. We really just gotta, you know, stay focused and uh, keep chugging along. You're watching the Varsity Media Sports Network, the home for New York high school sports. You're watching the Varsity Media Sports Network, the home for New York high school sports. At Catholic Health, when we see our island, we see extraordinary life. The most extraordinary of which is you. It's because our Catholic faith places the highest value on people, all people. It's the inspiration for our exceptional medical care with unmatched compassion. And it's why at Catholic Health, you're more than a patient. You're someone's family, best friend, and a neighbor to us all. Long live Long Island. it's time to order a college recruiting video from Varsity Media. Our video will help save you thousands of dollars in college tuition and land a spot on the team. Our videos include a bio section, editing effects to help you stand out on the field, music, and a digital link to send to college coaches. And if you act today, we are offering 15% off when you mention this ad, good through Thanksgiving. Contact Varsity Media today at 516 403 2050 or email Jeff at varsitymedia.net. High school football fans, Varsity Media is bringing exciting, exclusive content to you for the 2022 season. Introducing the Varsity Media Pass, available on iOS and Android. Accessible all season long, the Varsity Media Pass features game highlights. 
weekly podcasts. A clash of styles. Out to talk if you love those differing styles, right? Top 10 plays of the week. Player interviews and so much more. Head to varsitymediapass.com to download the app and start enjoying content only Varsity Media can bring. Let me tell you something. If tomorrow wasn't promised, what would you give for today? Forget everything else. Forget everything else. Forget that there was any sunlight left. What would you spend today thinking about? Yourself or the man that's beside you? Or the man that you know you'll give everything in your heart for? We get one opportunity in life. One chance in life to do whatever you're going to do. To lay your foundation and to make whatever mark you're going to make. Whatever legacy you're going to leave, leave your legacy. And it's found through effort. Wins and losses come a dime a dozen. You're watching the Varsity Media Sports Network, the home for New York high school sports. At Catholic Health, when we see our island, we see extraordinary life. The most extraordinary of which is you. It's because our Catholic faith places the highest value on people, all people. It's the inspiration for our exceptional medical care with unmatched compassion. And it's why at Catholic Health, you're more than a patient. You're someone's family, best friend, and a neighbor to us all. Long live Long Island. Welcome back to Mitchell Athletic Complex. Dylan Butler, Pat Godfrey here with you. The second half of this double A2 championship game presented by Catholic Health is about set to go. You see the Mountaineers on the field first out of halftime getting warmed up and uh, a terrific second quarter for the Mountaineers. They trailed 14-0 after one and they dominated the second quarter and they lead this one 15 to 14. Pat, let's take a look at the season that was for the Mountaineers and how Mount got here to Mitchell Athletic Complex. Interesting side note, too, is they've never played a championship game here. We showed you that history of championship games, those early games in the 90s. Those were always played at St. John's University and then that Turkey Bowl game, of course, being played on campus. You see the season here opening it up with that loss to Fordham Prep by 10. They bounce back with three straight wins. A tight loss to Zavarian. They do a great job later on in the season, as you see there in that semifinal, by avenging that loss. You see that brand new, beautiful turf field there as well by Lantech there for Mount St. Michael. And that's a big recruiting tool as well, right? And of course, so too is winning, Pat. And uh, that's what Mount wants to do here. And they want to win another championship. Want to be able to showcase that new field, that open house and Another championship in the trophy case, that doesn't hurt. No better way to bring in new Mountaineers <laughs> than, uh, you know, going out here today and winning a double-A-2 title. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of 
eighth graders throughout the tri-state area anxiously watching all the games here today as they look to the kind of decisions they're going to be making as to where to spend their next four years. But, you know, Mount has a beautiful campus up there in the Bronx and looking to, you know, punctuate their, their season the right way here today. Already 7-4, and four, playing in their 12th game of the season and actually getting a 13th, which is almost unheard of in New York State. So very experienced team coming out here for the second half. The Knights are making their way back. And let's take a look at their season this year. As Xavier, we said before, we've detailed it one win a year ago. They already matched that in week one, beating Zavarian 34-6. That was a big kind of a rivalry game because you draw from a similar pool of players as Zavarian. So that was big. You had that loss at Moore, but they led in that game. And you come back, you beat Kennedy Catholic. That went over Holy Cross, was over by Maimonides Park. That was the 175th anniversary of the school. What a day that was. And Xavier on that day won all three levels, freshman, JV, and varsity. Big win at sea, right? Never easy to go out to Staten Island, and they come away with that 35-27 win. They lost to St. John the Baptist. That was a 7-7 game as well, and, and those athletes that we've seen from Baptist kind of took over. They end the regular season there against Cardinal Spellman. Then they have that weird double bye. We saw that by Holy Trinity in the double A1, right, where you get that week eight bye, and then because you're the top seed, that bye again. But they didn't have any uh, problem there with that uh, bouncing back off after two weeks off, beating Kennedy Catholic again, 48-7. to And then, of course, the Turkey Bowl is coming up on Thursday morning out at Aviator down there in Brooklyn off the Belt Parkway against their arch rivals, the Rams of Fordham Prep. Yeah, and, you know, this is a Xavier team that has really handled AA2 competition very easily all year long. There are a couple of losses, both coming to strong AA1 opponents. You know, we're going to see more Catholic in a little bit here this afternoon, as well as St. John the Baptist, both really strong programs, a league up from Xavier. But in terms of competition on their own level, AA2, they've really been a dominant program all year long. No rust last weekend as it took care of Kennedy Catholic. And, uh, you know, really their first dogfight within this division all year long coming right here on Championship Saturday. 100%. And look, as Chris Stevens detailed, look, they don't expect to be here again next year, right? They are a double A2 this year. We, we told you why, um, but they will, they expect to be in double A1 uh, next fall. Opening kickoff of the second half. And it looks like Xavier will get things going from the 25-yard line. John Perez had an opportunity to speak to both coaches about what happened in the first half and second Guys, half. Guys, he just caught up with Let's bring it to John now. Nico Bustamante, one of the Guys, I just MC caught up with Michael. both head coaches. And let's start with the leaders, the Mountaineers of Mount St. Michael and Mario Valentini saying that his team really did a good job in the second quarter of executing on their tackles and not getting intimidated by the wing T offense, he says, in the second half. It's really just a matter of making the tackles and executing. And that's exactly what Chris Stevens said on the other side, that Xavier's not going to stay, stray away from the game plan, continue their offense, but also they have to do a better job of covering up Jabril Carter in the secondary. So keep an eye on the secondary adjustments Angela for Xavier the as they the try to come back against Mount. Guys? Thanks, John. And let's see if those adjustments here for both teams, how that comes about here in the second half. Zalatovsky starting off the second half, exactly how Xavier wanted to. Nine yards, hard fought. And boy, is he a gritty dude at 5'9", 150 pounds. He certainly runs with a much bigger presence than that. You're going to really need him to make a big push here yeah, that for a old, title. Sorry, Pat, that old school word that Chris Stevens used to describe him, moxie. <laughs> and he's got plenty of that. How about this? Love it. You give it to Mera. And Mera, the junior from Manhattan, bursts it up forward. And there you can see Mera there. He's been battling that ankle injury and hobbles a little bit coming up from that first down run. Yeah, Mera clearly fighting through some stuff, but he's a tough dude. Has that, that military family background, so nothing's getting him off this field here today. He's going to keep fighting. Again, this is a rugby player, right? Like, they are just a different 
beast altogether. First and 10 <laughs> from the 42. And again, Zalatovsky spins past the 50, and he's taken down at the 45-yard line. Yeah, how about this balance from Shane Zalatovsky going through the hole, full speed, gets hit. And you'll see right here, just follows his blockers up that crease, and boom, circle button through the hole to move the set of downs. And that is the beauty, if you will, of the single wing is that all those guys, they all have those blocking assignments up the field, right? So if you execute it the right way, you have the opportunity for big runs on every play. Zelotowski fakes the handoff, spins forward. He falls forward for a gain of five. Down to about the 40 at Mount St. Michael. Tackled right there by 0-2. You know, one of the things that makes it so tough playing defense against a Xavier attack is every single play, you're trying to diagnose four or five different backs coming out of the backfield, often going in different directions, couple of them blocking, couple of them faking. There's just a lot to sort through, which is why gap responsibilities are so important. We saw Mount St. Michaels do a good job in the second quarter of holding those responsibilities, struggling a little, a little bit here out the gate in the second half. Second and five for the Mount. Trying to push his way forward, wrestling forward. Yeah. It was Mera, the, t uh, the ball handler, outlaw, outlaw, outlaw Butler, Butler among the tacklers there for Mount St. Michael. Look like uh, Ethan, Fu Ethan Fuentes was also in on that one, the senior linebacker for Mount St. Michael. Do a really good job just bottling things up there. Kind of a key third and five. One of the things that Mario Valentini, the Mount head coach, said is whatever we do defensively, we, we can't be thinking. We've got to react. We've got to be sound. Third and five, and you see Xavier trying to catch Mount again. This worked, I want to say, three times in the first half. Push forward right toward the first down line, and that lean forward you mentioned before, that will get... Xavier the first down as it was Zalatovsky again. Yeah, you know, the experience of the senior Zalatovsky really coming into play here. A lot of times backs just want to hit the hole as fast as possible. You see kind of hesitates a little bit and just finds that crease and able to move the chains again. It's been a really impressive drive out the gate for Xavier and kind of exactly how they like to operate on the offensive side of the ball. Good block there too by Mia Dashevsky. The junior pulling tackle, the seven tackle in the single wing formation. Not much doing there for Xavier. The run went to the outside. Anthony Hernandez, the tackler for the Mount. A guy who, like so many of his teammates, has just gotten so much better during the season. A guy who was maybe playing out of position to start the year. And Hernandez... Uh, he's physical, he's a good runner, and he's shored up along with Outlaw Butler, that middle linebacking position. Yeah, Hernandez, big reason why they're here today. He had a big interception versus Severian, but he's had a really good year, and as a junior, a guy who's going to be, be back next year and another big piece of that defense. Second and 11, look at this. Zalatovsky, the pass attempt, looking for Gavin Gallagher, and that is incomplete. So he's what, one of two on the day today. Hey, I mean, that's pretty good efficiency considering the offense they're running. But no, you got to hold your breath every single time that Xavier drops back to throw the ball. Never really know what quite is going to happen. And, uh, you know, I know we talk a little bit of smack to Zalatowski about his arm strength, but he, he got the ball out there. And again, he's the best option right there. And <laughs> Uh, passing the football is never something you're going to see Xavier do a lot of. Again, came into this game, eight-game regular season with 28 attempts for 160 yards. Third and 11. Look at this. It's Mara. Throws it up. Intercepted at the 16-yard line. Essentially, Pat, that kind of looks like a punt, right? Like it's just thrown up there. Louis Ferran was the uh, guy who got the pick. 
So it's Mount who had all that momentum at the second quarter. Uh, they continue that here after halftime. And such an interesting play call here for Xavier. They're doing a really good job executing their core offense, but look to get cute on a couple plays in a row. They let Mera throw the ball, and it looked like that one hung up there for forever. Ferran does a really good job as the ball hawk coming under, and all of a sudden, you know, turnovers have caused a lot of the swings in this game. A uh, little injection of momentum after a nice drive out the gate from Xavier. Let's see if Mount, the second seed here in double A1, can capitalize. And there's a short run by Bo Bay and a better job by that interior defense this time, Pat, by stopping the junior running back. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm sure they made some adjustments at halftime on this Xavier defense in terms of, you know, how are we going to stop Tyler Bobay? He's been running the ball at will up the middle. So look to see them shore some things up up front, but potentially leave them a little bit more vulnerable on the back end. Mache Young among the tacklers there for Xavier. The senior defensive end replacing an injured Ratu Navati, who tore his ACL against Moore. Um, Tough loss there for Xavier. Another run up the middle and another pushback by the Knights' defense. Scariano pushing back Bobay. Matt Scariano is, uh, you know, Xavier royalty. Pops played there back in the day. He's a board of trustee member, and he's really stepping up, making the, uh, the Xavier faithful proud on the defensive side of the ball. Yeah, Scariano, the senior, makes the trip from Bronxville down to Lower Manhattan every single morning. Third and ten. The pressure comes, and that's a great job by number nine of Xavier, Amir Yuxel. He was the one who hurried up. Pearson for that incomplete pass, and it goes three and out for Mount. So they do not capitalize off of that turnover. Yeah, it's such an important stop here for Xavier. You know, you came out of the gate and had a great drive on offense to start out the half. Unfortunately, turn the ball over and give Mount a little bit of a break, but great job by, by the uh, Xavier defense getting a quick three and out and giving the ball back to their O. So a punting situation here for the Mounts. Looks like Zalatowski back. Special teams have been interesting. There's a fair catch at about the 36-yard line, and John Perez had a great conversation we saw there at halftime with Chris O'Halloran-Gannon, and... Here is the Mount player getting to know and uh, see Justin Roberts. I love the Thanksgiving food, Rasta pasta. I had to dig a little bit deeper. What is Rasta pasta? He's like, look, I'm from the islands. Basically, it's pasta. Throw some chicken in there, some spices, maybe some shrimp. I said, I got to try that, big man. Uh, favorite movie? You throw in any of those Fast and the Furious, and the first Call of Duty is Justin Roberts' favorite video game. Good man with some great taste, but not surprising I say that considering I'm a fellow center. <laughs> Mera pushing forward. Maybe we should have asked Mera his favorite food, right? Coming from France. Let's see, maybe a little, some escargot action for him. I'm not sure. A <laughs> little too highbrow for uh, your standard <laughs> hot dog crowd. People like me. Yeah. Gain of six on first down, which brings up a second and four for Xavier. This time, Mount does not jump. Run up the middle, and again, the Mountaineers' defense, man, they are standing tall. 58, you saw there, Jair Edwards, the freshman from the Bronx. Listen, man, six foot two fifty. He's already got a great base, right? And obviously, he's learning the game. He's usually the nose guard, but obviously, again, with Xavier being so run heavy. You're forced to kind of play a four-man front, so playing more of a defensive tackle. But Edwards, man, uh, he has come in and done a really solid job as a ninth grader going against seniors. Yeah, how about, you know, rising to the moment, young guy stepping up, making a big play on the inside, and 
Those interior guys instrumental against Xavier. Third and three, Zalatowski jump ball. And the good job knocking it down there by Outlaw Butler. He smacks the helmet a little bit, but that's fine, man. Just knock it down. No big deal. You get the ball back. Yeah, Dylan, I, I do question a little bit why Xavier has resorted to the pass in some key third down situations in this game. Clearly not their strong suit or what they love to do on offense. Right there, you're in a third and three situation. Uh, elect to throw the ball and, uh, and don't come up with it. I just wonder when you're really hitting on kind of all levels on the running attack, why you resort to the pass there. Ferron is the man deep. It'll take a bounce. He fields it at the 27-yard line. Got a little bit mixed up there uh, with his blocker upfield. It was Nico Bustamante. Really good job there by Robert Arteca Batista. There in coverage, you see big number 56 pumped up on the sideline. The senior, good stuff, and great job also by Donahue in blowing up that play. Special teams, you know, really have to play three phases of the game if you hope to win here at Championship Saturday at Mitchell Field. Arteca Batista from Staten Island. Chris Stevens says a great kid who just never shuts his mouth and everything, everything out of that mouth though is positive and that's what he loves about him. You know, on any good team, you need some of those crazy guys who are just yapping their brains out. No surprise that he's from Staten Island. I think. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. You would say the best in Staten Island coming up in the next game, right? More Catholic making the AA1 championship game for the second straight year. Pearson, the low sh drive down the middle, the kind of line drive look. Trying to find Wheeler, and it bounces there. And uh, more Catholic will take on Holy Trinity, the top two seeds in Double A One as well, and the top two seeds in Triple A also emerged. Chalk going forward, as it'll be Iona Prep and and St. Anthony's scheduled for a five o'clock start. We'll see uh, how far back that one will be pushed. Pearson fakes the handoff under pressure. He's being chased down. Pearson just tries to get out of bounds. Good. Pursuit there. Looks like it was uh, Lachea Young right there, the senior, 6'4, 205, in pursuit for Xavier, number 82. Yeah, Mashea Young, a rugby yeah. captain. He would be a captain if not for all these returning starters. But essentially, Chris Stevens says that Young is as good, is as valuable as there's a penalty flag thrown penalty as the other line. captains of this team. He's the lone guy in the Xavier team, Pat, going both ways, and there's been no decrease in his output. Also yeah, another one of those great down. attitude yeah. guys. So fourth and ten for the mount. They'll be forced to punt. So both teams have, have kind of been uh, between yeah, the 30s here the to start this day. third quarter. Yep, Mount really struggling to get anything kind of going on the offensive side of the ball. Very limited in their time of possession here in the third quarter. So Xavier getting another shot at it. Punt is up. Good looking one as well. It'll be fielded and fumbled. Ball is loose and it looks like it'll be Xavier ball. Really nice. Allen with the recovery, but nearly disaster there for the Knights. Yeah, you know, that's a heads-up play right there by Allen and just kind of underscores how important it is to have every single guy in your team bought in and aware of the situation at all times if you're trying to win a championship. You know, Allen, heads-up play, ready to jump on the ball, and Xavier retains possession. So Knights ball on their own 23-yard line. First and 10 with 3.06 left in this third quarter. The 15-14 mount with the lead. And look at this. First down. The GG Express. Gavin Gallagher to the edge. Gallagher. Can he go all the way? Cuts inside. Pulled down near the five-yard line. Gavin Gallagher. Gavin Gallagher, you kidding me here? He's going to get this ball. Follow some great blocks. You'll see number seven, 70, Michael 
Mio Dashevsky with a key block there. Gallagher gets off to the races, breaks the tackle, and only 75 yards later is Mount eventually able to bring him down. Hell of a job by the senior. First big play here for in a while for Xavier, and now Zalatovsky tries to find his way into the end zone, gets a little bit of a push, and he's pulled down at the three. And you can hear right now the Xavier student section getting into it a little bit. They're getting excited for their boys. They're waiting since the first quarter to see a spark of light from this offense. And they get it in spades from Gavin Gallagher. Chris Stevens' call went to Anthony DeBeau, the senior power back. Let's see what the Knights pull here on second and goal from the three. And a good job defensively, Jonathan O2. Jonathan O2, we've been calling his name a lot today. Right there, shoots the gap, just no time for Xavier. And a key third down situation here, third and goal from the five yard line. Xavier really gonna need to punch this one in. O2, really a defensive back, but he's been kind of used as that hybrid guy that linebacker, third and goal now from the five off that loss of two. They give it to the big man. And Medi, Mera, touchdown, Xavier. <laughs> Medi, Mera, he's limping around out there, but that wasn't enough to stop him. He can worry about his pain after the game, after he's a champion. Mera, out of the Wildcat, does a good job following that lead block and punching it in to go up here in the AA2 title game. Many Mera gets in the end zone as Xavier takes the lead once again. They'll go for two and they'll get stuck. Stopped, it appears, unless they get that rugby scrum push. <laughs> and they do! <laughs> My gosh. An assertion of will from these Knights of Xavier right here. We know them as a rugby school. They get into the scrum and best believe they're not losing that one. You'll see Zalatowski. Looks like he gets stopped. But then all of a sudden, some of those big boys, Anthony Dubow. Bunch Eddie of guys. Mera, <laughs> Mashea Young. Oh, that was fantastic. One of those situations of just how bad do you want it? You've been working all year for today. Punch it in. So Xavier now. Their fans are up and excited. Nothing like getting that push, man, and that's that heck. That's the that's a Xavier two point conversion if you've ever seen one, right? Like the extra effort, the physicality, uh, that is Xavier through and through. And you know, Coach Stevens has been able to generate such consistency from this program for so many years, running the same offense, same spirit of toughness. And when you can win situations like that, that's how you know or why he has so much confidence in this group. And a fumble again, fielded at the one. And Xavier starting to feel it a little bit now. One of those big men for Xavier is Chris O'Halloran Gannon. Let's meet the senior from Manhattan. His mom, Mary, owns that fantastic pub there down on 2nd Avenue. Mary owes how to ask the favorite meal, man, shepherd's pie. On a day like this, that's the go-to, buddy. Shepherd's <laughs> pie, man. Run This Town by Jay-Z. That's his song on his game day list. His favorite athlete, Carmelo Anthony. It's six foot five, 290. You know, a lot of good meals throughout his life at Mario's over on 2nd Avenue. No doubt about it. The Xavier coach is going to meet there in a few weeks uh, on their season end sort of celebration there. First and 10 from the 17-yard line. Pearson just slings it sidearmed. 
And that's a short gain. He dropped back so far. It was a completion, but ultimately it's only like a gain of about two. Yeah, really nice stick there from Joseph Delavecchia, the 5'11", 245-pound junior out of Queens. Haven't called his name a lot today, but steps up right there. And by the way, Chris Stevens, clearly an aficionado of Mario's, said best chicken wings uh, and chicken strips on the planet. Just saying. Second and eight. A run up the middle and a short gain uh, at McKinley. that. By, by the way, Mary, if you ever want the quality of your food verified for a large <laughs> audience, us at Varsity Media will always welcome those chicken strips up here in the booth. I'll take the shepherd's pie, buddy. Yeah, oh, perfect. Really can't lose. So Xavier, a little momentum here for the Knights. The final 10 seconds now of this third quarter. Can I don't think Mount will even need to get a playoff here as the third quarter winds down. What a ball game we have here. The, the double A2 and the double A2 championship game. It is Xavier, a 22 to 15 uh, lead after three. You're watching this Catholic football championship game presented by Catholic Health right here on the Varsity Media Sports Network. Let me tell you something. If tomorrow wasn't promised, what would you give for today? Forget everything else. Forget everything else. Forget that there was any sunlight left. What would you spend today thinking about? Yourself? Or the man that's beside you. Or the man that you know you'll give everything in your heart for. We get one opportunity in life. One chance in life. To do whatever you're going to do. To lay your foundation and to make whatever mark you're going to make. Whatever legacy you're going to leave. Leave your legacy. And it's found through effort. Wins and losses come a dime a dozen. Welcome back to Mitchell Field as Xavier has a 22-15 lead. Hello again, everybody. I'm John Perez. And when you look at the tradition that the Xavier Football Club has had over the past decade, it's kind of hard to believe that it's been 10 years since the 2012 championship team. And the 2012 team has a special place in the heart of Xavier alums far and wide as it's a 10-year anniversary of Hurricane Sandy. And the reason why that's oh, significant sorry. is that I, I Xavier's 2012 roster had 25% of their players displaced from the Superstorm and had players staying at other players' houses and, and, and just losing their entire homes. And there, was, and the there was a concern amongst the Xavier club of canceling the season. And Chris Stevens asked his crew if that's what they wanted to do, but he was met by heavy protests, not just from the players, but from the parents as well, knowing how important that Xavier meant, or Xavier football meant to the club and to their parents. On the county, Having said all of that, they ended up running rough shot through the playoffs and knocking off St. John the Baptist right Ellen. here at Mitchell Field. They won a championship the in 2015, down. lost in 2018, and guys are less than 12 minutes three, away from bringing home Michael another title to the city. And thanks, John. And Xavier defense gets a stop. And, man, what a memorable night that was right back here, Mitchell Athletic Complex. And, I mean, that's a, that's a heartwarming story, right, when you think about the journey that that Xavier team made that year. Again, 25%. That picture we showed, all those guys displaced during Hurricane Sandy. And every step of the journey, they didn't want their football season to end. They lost everything else, right? They said, we're not going to lose football. And then it became therapeutic. For, and, and all the parents made it every game as well because that was the time they were there watching their sons play football was time they weren't worrying about trying to dig their house out. Yeah, it really just speaks to the healing power of sports. You know, uh, when you're going through some of the, the toughest things in your life, having a, a brotherhood around you can make it so much more bearable and uh, I know for those families back then in 2012, a lot of time football was just a distraction. How about this? Ow. The fake punt. <laughs> what a call by Mario Valentini and the Mountaineers. 
the Riverboat Gambler. Dylan, just to finish up that thought, you know, being from the New York area, Hurricane Sandy impacted us all, but especially those guys at Xavier. And Ten years ago, really just amazing the way that they rallied together as they watch you know, the alumni, the, the young boys now try and pull it off themselves here in this AA2 title. So the call of the game there goes to Mario Valentini. You don't get that, man. That's, that's second guess city, right? Here we go. First and 10, 33 over the middle. Takes a couple of deflections. And again, oh. nearly picked off. My gosh. Tomas Diaz almost caught that one off the deflection. Number six, free safety. What a moment that would have been for him, right? You've called his name a few times the other way, right? Where Carter has gotten the better of him. And you always tell those guys in the defensive secondary, you, it's, you've got to be like a pitcher, man. There's, there's no memory, right? Like you just forget the last play. And Diaz nearly came up with a big one there for the Knights. Second and 10 from the Mount 33-yard line. Pearson back to pass. Dumps one on that screen pass. Did it take a bounce? It appears to have, or at least down there, obviously, because he fell down catching the football, was 0-2. So that's a completed pass, but it really for naught. Yeah, d down immediately. Just a reminder for our viewers at home, doesn't work like the NFL where you can catch a ball on the ground, get up and keep running so long as you're not touched. Um, the second a knee goes down in high school football, you're down. So it sets up a, a third and long situation. One thing I'm kind of paying attention to when I'm looking at this Knights defense, is they've done a lot of single high safety today and uh, run the risk of getting burned by, uh, by Carter and company. We'll see how they play this one right here. It is Carter. He gets the block on the edge. He gets out. And it looks like will he get the – he got knocked out, I think just shy of that, or at least a couple yards shy. It wasn't as close as I initially thought. He is short, though, of the first down. Yeah, Diaz was playing that single high position, flew down right here, does a really good job of getting Carter out just before the sticks. Now another crucial fourth down situation for Mount St. Michael. 10.42 remaining. It's an official's timeout here. And you wonder, too, right, the way that Xavier can move the football – Pat, is 10:42 actually feeling more like a 5:42, right, in this game? Because you run the risk of punting the football or losing it, as I'll bring it out for a measurement, of having Xavier have one of those long drives and just eat up so much of the clock. Exactly. I think that's why you saw Mount St. Michael go for the fake punt earlier on in this drive, just because they realize how valuable every possession is when you're playing against a team and an offense like the Xavier Knights. Xavier could very legitimately drain this ball down, or th this play clock down to zero if they get the ball back uh, at any point. So uh, I think if you're Mount St. Michael, you just got to be thinking touchdown and really nothing else from here on out. 22-15 the score in this double A2 championship game. These two teams did not meet. A weird quirk in the schedule. They did not meet in the regular season. Not the case for our next two games today. Those are both rematches of really close games. Here we go. Fourth and inches. Pearson under center. Fakes the handoff. Rolls. It's not there. And he just falls. And you credit. I think that was Donahue again just for pressuring Pearson. You guys in there, but you know if, if you're Pearson, you just got to figure out a way to try and move forward here. But five nights in hot pursuit just has to has to fall down. And boy, what a uh, what a good bit of momentum here for Xavier as they get the ball on the 35 yard line of the Mountaineers to march this one in. And hopefully, if you're a Knights fan, put this one out of reach for Mount St. Michael. Yeah, first and ten. From the 35, Medi Mera. Look at this. Bum ankle, who cares? Mera battling forward. And that's the change in Mera's game, was not that physical runner 
early on. And again, the heart to heart with his dad. Yeah, that changed things, man. You got on the phone with your dad. He's like, you got to be tougher, young man, and probably said it in French and maybe use different words. <laughs> and suddenly, Mera's answered the bell. Mera stepping up in a big way. And, you know, really this second half has been all about want to for the Xavier Knights. You remember that two-point conversion? Mera again, just running hard. And that one was nearly blown up. You see Mera, the Xavier players wanting a personal foul or a flag thrown as some extra contact by Jair Edwards. But that botched snap resulted in Mera just having to fall on the football. Yeah, this play should have been blown dead almost immediately. Mera has to put a knee down in order to retrieve the, the errant snap. Now, now back to the drawing board. Yeah, second and 14 inside the final 10 minutes. Xavier would really love to put the pressure here on Mount by getting into the end zone, but the Mountaineer is saying no. Well done right here. DeBoe was the rusher. Looks like, sorry, looks like Jair Edwards yeah. busting through the freshman. We called his name out earlier, six foot two fifty, just making some hay there on the inside. And uh, you know, don't look now, but a third and sixteen type situation for Xavier, not their comfort point outside of field goal range. So kind of interested to see what Chris Stevens dials up here for his offense. Yeah, third and sixteen, big play here in the game. Another passing attempt over the middle. Jump ball, and that is an interception. INT by number three, Louis Ferron with the pick. We called his name before, right? Louis Another Ferron, one. Second, second on the afternoon. We're seeing him as a ball hawk here. Doesn't help that the, the, the throw kind of hangs in the air for a lot longer than Shane Zalatowski would have liked, but effectively a punt there as Mount St. Michael will get the ball on the five-yard line. A hundred percent. That was going to be my point. The glass half full on that Xavier sideline is now you're forcing Mount to try to go the length of the football field to score a touchdown, right? So it's a, it's a turnover, but ultimately it's, it, it still works very much in your favor. No doubt. First and ten from the five. Pearson from his end zone slings it. He's got Carter deep, but just overthrew Jabril Carter. And if you're on that Xavier sideline, man, you are like, whoa, that was almost really dangerous. Yeah, really got to keep your eyes on number seven at all times. I've been watching him, and, uh, you know, there's been a, quite a few plays where, you know, Mount hasn't been able to connect, but Jabril Carter has been able to gain some strong separation. So especially when you're going up against Mount, and they need to go 95 yards to tie this one up. If I'm calling defense for Xavier, I'm making sure that I got some extra help over the top for seven. Pearson slings it looking for Carter. That's incomplete. That guy that you referenced, the DC for Xavier is Dom DeFalco. He was a starting free safety back in 2009, a disciple of Kevin Kelly. He converted this defense to a 4-4 uh, back in 2009, DeFalco. Like a true Xavier guy, right? Played scrum half at Penn State Rugby as well. Yeah, no matter where you look within this program, there's just, you know, the parallels with the rugby program. And, hey, if you have such a, a nationally exceptional rugby program like they do at Xavier, might as well utilize it. They draw on a lot of really tough athletes out of their rugby program. And Coach DeFalco, just, uh, you know, another one of those tough dudes. Third and 10 from the five. They'll try to get, I think that Carter, I think, in motion, but a great job defensively by Xavier reading that. And it was 82 again, making the tackle, Mache Young. You know, last time we saw Mount St. Michael bring out their punting unit, they ran a great fake. This time around, wouldn't expect that to be the case around their own eight yard line. It's a little bit too risky here. Um, Xavier on the flip side, position to receive this punt in great field position. Yeah, the punt will be from the end zone. Actually, looks like the almost the back of the end zone, or at least uh, 
pretty deep in the end zone. Tomas Diaz is at the 45-yard line. He's the lone player back. Xavier would love to get a block here. Punt is off. It is a short one. What kind of bounce will this take? It will take a Xavier bounce, man, right at about the 33-yard line. So Xavier, another opportunity here, knocking on the door, really trying to put this game away with 7.21 left in the fourth quarter. Yeah, Xavier in great position here. As you said, seven minutes left. That really plays to their advantage. They like to get into the huddle every single play, keep the ball on the ground, keep that clock rolling. And Xavier gonna try to do what they do best right here to close this one out in the AA2 title game. First and 10 from the 33 yard line. There's the handoff, a flag on the play. Zalatovsky gets to the second edge but we expect this one to come back. Xavier has played a pretty clean game. There hasn't been a lot of penalties, but this one will be an offensive holding penalty against the Knights. And that's just really killer. You know, we've talked earlier in this game about how much of a drain these penalties can be on a drive, especially when you like to play football the way that Xavier does in this situation, get into a first and 20 scenario really limits their play calling abilities on offense. And that was one of the keys that Mario Valentini said, right? Get them into and long situations. And Xavier there with a self-inflicted wound to do so. First and 20 from the 43 yard line. And more movement, is this against the Knights? It is. Oh man. Just killer back-to-back -back penalties here to move well back to first and 25. Yeah, they started this drive at the 33-yard line. Now they're back out at midfield. And the clock hasn't moved, right? 7-13 is left. Yeah, bad to worse here so far for the Knights. Oh, going to look to right the ship. Don't have to get it all at once, but might have to be a bit more aggressive than normal. And another pass here as Zalatovsky slings it, and that one is long, incomplete on first down. Dylan, you know, I hate the Monday morning quarterback, but kind of questioning why in this scenario when the clock is such a priority as well, you're dropping back on first down to throw the ball. Your quarterback's only thrown the ball 28 times on the year going into today, so not something he's overly confident doing. And, uh, you know, just another kind of unnecessarily dangerous scenario that Xavier's thrown into. See number eight there in the huddle, that's Aiden Honig. He was the intended target, and really, he's that guy. Like, of the ten completions this year for Zalatovsky, five have gone to Honig. Second and 25 from the 48-yard line. Low snap, Zalatovsky spins. This one is a completed pass and a short one at that. It goes to 82, Mashea Young. So looking at third and 25 right here for Xavier. Not a lot of different plays they can dial up for situations like this. I'd expect them to just try and get whatever chunk they can and expect to punt the ball back to Mount St. Michael. Here we go, third and 24. As you mentioned, Pat, could be a game here of field position. They will punt it quick. Mero with the kick. It's a fair catch. Dropped! That was third down. Yeah, no, they quibbed it. They, they did a squib kick there on third down, and it nearly paid huge dividends there as the ball was fumbled. They'll still get Mount into a deep position. You know, you love pinning Mount deep in that situation, but my question is, third down, you've got an extra 40 seconds that you can take off the clock potentially. Every second's gonna really matter as we get down into the closing minutes of this AA2 title. So potentially an ill-advised decision from the Xavier coaching staff. Well, they literally punted on on third down. I've yeah. never, never, never seen <laughs> no, that No, I'm one saying before. they punted on even going to a fourth down. <laughs> 0-2, the runner. 
And O2 is a guy who, you know, could be the best running back option for Mount, but he's so good defensively, right? And that's why you've got Bo Bay as, as the guy because, you, you know, you, you, you want to limit as much as you can guys going both ways. First and 10 from the 19-yard line. Pearson back to pass. A little screen pass. Looks like that was Bo Bay. And a short gain there for the mount. Or actually, it's 0 2. A gain of three. As it's getting late early here. 5 35 and counting in this fourth quarter. Mount needs a big play here. Second and seven. Here's a handoff to Jonathan O2. O2, the extra physicality. We know that he brings it on the defensive side and he shows it there rushing the football and a big first down there for the Mountaineers. Yeah, Jonathan O2 doing it all right here. Kind of interested in why you're not seeing a, a bit more of a sense of urgency out of Mount St. Michael right here as the clock is winding down. About to go underneath five minutes left in regulation. Mount needs a touchdown right here. They've been running the ball and they've been doing a, a really good job with it. We're going to need to have some urgency in these closing minutes. Here's Pearson. Look out, and he's pulled down and sacked. Amir Yuxel, we've called his name all day long. The 6'1", 190 junior from Manhattan. And makes a huge play right there. Second sack of the year. And couldn't ask for it at a bigger time right here. You'll see Pearson roll out. And before he has a chance, do anything with that ball. Number nine's all over it. Huge play. Yeah, it brings up a second and 18 from the 26. Look out, and Pearson, his knee went down off of that errant snap. So things going sideways now for the Mount. And Mount St. Michael still looking at the sideline, kind of taking their time and getting these plays in as the clock is now ticking down to the four-minute mark. They really need a sense of urgency here. If they don't score on this drive, they're going to want to get that ball back, and time is going to be a huge factor. This is the biggest play of the game right now for Mount, right? Third and 24 from their own 21-yard line. Keep an eye on number seven. That's all i got to say. Pearson, the pressure comes again. It is Yuxel again. This time it is a completed pass, but just past that original line of scrimmage. It was Samuels with the reception. Really nice open field tackle here by James Franchock, the senior linebacker for Xavier. And now a fourth and nine situation. I think that Mount St. Michael is in a, a, a spot here where they're going to have to go for it. Franchock's the guy who won the McTiernan Award there at Xavier given to a rising senior, that rover safety, and the Mount will call a timeout to talk things over. So this kind of feels like this is your game right here, Dylan. If uh, Xavier gets the ball back, hard to imagine they'll relinquish it. So Mount St. Michael has nine yards to uh, you know, capitalize right here and try and fulfill a dream that a lot of these guys have had since they enrolled up there in the Bronx four years ago. Hey, football fans, all season long, Varsity Media has brought you exclusive coverage of the Catholic High School Football League and Long Island football as well. It is not too late to grab our app for game highlights, top 10 plays of the week, weekly podcasts, and more, only $29.99. Head to varsitymediapass.com and get the Varsity Media Pass now. And that gentleman number seven there, you see? We'll see him in the next game. Who will win that Oof. most valuable player award? You always know when Matt McCower brown is in the house because he gets shots <laughs> like that. Dylan, you know, if this game is any indication of what's to come here on Championship Saturday, I'm real excited because I think we got some barn burners in store. Here we go, fourth and nine. Pearson over the middle, it's complete! <laughs> and look at this! The big man, Travis Agonier! 
Oh my gosh. Looks Excuse like me. Cameron Cam Wheeler. Wheeler, number 12 with the touchdown. Are you kidding me? Fourth and nine, just when you thought you could put it in the books as a Knights fan, all of a sudden Cameron Wheeler steps up to the plate. 6'4", 180. You'll see Pearson here deliver a strike on the slant. Wheeler has a step, and he's not going to get caught. His third PAT, uh, excuse me, third touchdown of the year. Now the critical PAT coming up. O'Connor. His kick is up. And it is good. <laughs> How about that? Fourth down for the Mount. They were up against the ropes and a little rope-a-dope there by the Mountaineers. And apologies to Cam Wheeler, man. I should have saw that big six-foot-four frame rumbling down the field. And what a touchdown for Cam Wheeler, man. He's a guy. He's that big target guy right among the receivers. They like to get him over the middle and... Uh, it's funny because Mario Valentini said he doesn't have the greatest speed. That's okay, man. He caught the football down the field, and he made sure he held on to it and got himself in the end zone. And how about just you know the resiliency of this Mount St. Michael Mountaineers team here today? They've been getting punched in the face. You saw them have a, a rough first quarter, fight, claw back in the second quarter. Rough third quarter, and you claw back right there to tie the ball game up with three minutes left. Boy, what a day to be playing football and watching football at Mitchell Field Athletic Complex. As we said, these two teams didn't play each other in the regular season. We had no idea, right, like how these differing styles would set up, right? We have a pretty good base of an, an opinion for the next two games. This one was wide open, and man, he, it has delivered 22 all with just over three minutes remaining O'Connor off that huge PAT the kick is at the 10 and look at this return Gallagher double G oh and a saving tackle and now that momentum the pendulum swing goes to the boys from Lower Manhattan as the Double G Express again with a huge play. Gavin Gallagher has had a huge day today and when his team needs him the most, contributes in that third element. We always talk about special teams. It's one third of the game. You got to win that side of the football. Picks a spot, right? Look at that. He wasn't going. He wasn't blazing all the way, right? Just north-south, finds his spot, hits the hole, and boy, what a huge play from Gavin Gallagher. First and 10 for the 31 yard line. Run up the middle by Zalantowski. You know, I, I don't know what the hurry up hypothetical offense looks like <laughs> for Xavier. Get a single wing. But I would expect them to use a bit more sense of urgency than we're used to as the clock just ticks below 230. Second and six from the 27 yard line. Again, they shift right. Back that unbalanced look. Zalantowski tries to go up the middle. And Nick Palmer, the junior from the Bronx, his first year playing football, 6'3", 208. And he's the guy who was added to this mix, right? It isn't a regular starter, but again, you've got to play with those four linemen against this single wing look. So Nick Palmer is the guy whose name was called. Big tackle there, but it is a third and one now for Xavier. Third and one, a minute 30 remaining. Zalantowski will get the first down, and he's pulled down inside the 20. That will stop the clock on the moving of the chains. And now definitely needs to be a huge sense of urgency from the Xavier offense. Clock ticking down below a minute 20 left in regulation. Here we go. First and 10 from the 19-yard line. 
Oh, and some movement up front for Xavier. A false start penalty. Looked like it was Mia Dashevsky, number 70, that seven tackle. And this will back up the Knights five yards. Dylan, you know, we've, we've talked ad nauseum about the importance of limiting the mistakes, especially when you're playing within a wing T style offense that's heavily reliant on the run. Did not want to get behind the chains there. First and 15 from the 24 yard line. Zalantowski pulled down from behind. And a timeout called. It was 0 2 with the tackle. Timeout called by Xavier. And there you see Chris Stevens in there in the huddle. Another interesting thing about the Xavier coaching staff is they all they have all got those connections. We mentioned DeFalco before, a 2009 graduate. You've got Brian McMahon, both of his sons, Dan, class of 2005, and Kevin, class of 2009, played at Xavier. You've got Mike Mike Barbieri, a captain of the 1980 team. Matt Fury, a 2007 grad. Eric Nichols, a 2000. An 11 grad. And they've got a really strong culture down there in lower Manhattan. Seeing Sec it on display here. For sure, second and 12 from the 22 yard line. Gallagher cuts it to the outside. Gavin Gallagher is pulled down inside the 10 yard line. How many big plays Will Gavin Gallagher make today? With just 44 seconds left, they give themselves four down to try and punch this one in. That clock is running, so they're gonna have to rush up to the line here. 34 seconds left. There's the handoff. Zalatovsky up the middle. Zalatovsky is stopped. At the one. Zalatowski down at the one. And gotta got a timeout for Xavier. Xavier. Xavier using that timeout with 24 seconds left. They're going to have a second and goal scenario from the two yard line. I'd expect them to keep it on the ground. Their trusted senior quarterback, Shane Zalatowski, got you this far. They might want to just get back into another rugby scrum type situation and see if they can will this one across the goal line. Pat, man, it is not easy for those guys. Consider this, their practices are at Pier 40. <laughs> they split time during the regular season at the Baruch Playground, the elementary turfed field in that quadrangle of Alphabet City apartment complexes. It is not easy for these Knights of Xavier but they are two yards away and 24 ticks of the clock away from lifting another Catholic Football League championship. First and goal from the two yard line. Two yards, these guys will remember the rest of their lives. Pushing inside, touchdown, Xavier. Who else, right, but your trusted senior quarterback, Shane Zalatowski. We've seen him all day long shoulder the load for this night's offense. And with two yards to go and a double-A-2 title on the line, Coach Chris Stevens dials up his number. And who else would carry him over the line to number 41, your wingback, Gavin Gallagher. Both seniors have had hell of a career, or incredible careers. And how about this? You've got the PAT is good, and now you're going to get a personal foul against Mount. This will be assessed on the kickoff. So things will go from bad to worse here for Mount St. Michael. That don't bother Shane Zalatowski though. He knows that he just took care of business. He knows he, in 21 seconds he can go out on top, finish off his career with the first championship for Xavier since 2015. And you've got the potential here of as that Xavier flag is raised high here. And you have an opportunity now to put it into the end zone or at least maybe do something here in the final 21 seconds with the kickoff being placed at the 
five yard line of Mount St. Michael. Yeah, gonna be a really long field here for Mount St. Michael. Gonna have to score in a hurry, but. We see you, Shane. <laughs> and Shane should rightfully feel very proud of the performance he put in today. Just across the board, spectacular. He's got the confidence, the moxie, as his head coach Chris Stevens says. He is a leader of young men. 29, 22, 21 seconds left. And this kick will go into the end zone for a touchback. So does Mount have another response? We saw a big one a couple of minutes ago as Cam Wheeler had that long touchdown reception. Jabril Carter has been the guy all season long. Number seven is the leading receiver in double A too. He is their big play receiver. He is a senior. He's wanting to make sure he'd love to go out here with a championship. We do know both teams have one more game left though in the season. Pearson looks to his sideline. That one is complete out towards the center of the field. It is Wheeler making the catch and a timeout is called by the Mounts. So, you know, if you're, if you're Coach DeFalco for Xavier, really key consideration here is just who's on number seven, who's on number 12. We've seen Jabril Carter and Cameron Wheeler make huge impacts through the air already in this game for Mount St. Michael. It's little doubt that Mark Pearson's going to be dialing up one of those guys' numbers, his two trusted seniors out there on the edge. Xavier likely to drop six right here. Let's see, can they tackle in space in order to lock up this AA2 title? Good look there at the Tom Murray Award, named after the legendary former Cardinal Hayes basketball coach. First and 10 from the 35-yard line. Pearson goes sideline, finds Carter up the sideline, rushes it out of bounds, right out toward midfield. So you get a first down at midfield, 10 seconds remaining. I think if you're Mark Pearson, if you can do another quick hitter to the sideline, maybe pick up another 10 to 15 yards, then it puts you in a situation where you can have a final play, a Hail Mary type scenario, where you can loft it up and see if maybe one of your big receivers being either you know 6'4 Cam Wheeler or 6'2 Kyle Samuels can go up and bring something down. Second and two, Pearson. He will dial it up long. Ball lofted in the air. Carter was the intended target and that pass is incomplete. Four seconds remaining. Now again in high school football, the clock will stop when you move the chains but it is also a momentarily, moment. It's not a long stop, right? Like you just move to get the chain crew going. So I'm not sure if there's going to be enough time to be able to get a first down and then get another play off with four seconds left. I think this is definitely going to be the, uh, the last play of the season for these two teams. And Mount St. Michael will call timeout. Parents and athletes, now that the season is ending, Order a college recruiting video from Varsity Media. Our video will help you stand out from the crowd. You, you may save money in college tuition and help you land a spot on the team. Bio sections, editing effects, music, and more. Email jeff at varsitymedia.net by Thanksgiving, and you will get 15% off. You know, Dylan, when they talk highlight tapes, a lot of times people only think of it in the realm of recruiting. But one thing I can also add in there is when you're thinking about putting together your highlight tape, that's something you can fall back on, look at, show your kids someday for the rest of your life. You know, I, I know once every year or two, I like to pull up my old highlights on YouTube, reminisce, go through the glory days. And for those guys who are just finishing up a great high school season, I promise you'll never regret getting that immortalized with a great tape through Varsity Media. You get your Bruce Springsteen playing in the background, right? It's a little oh, glory yeah. days. <laughs> <laughs> it comes quicker than you or, realize. Or, or a little a little Kenny Chesney there, right? Yeah. Falls, bo boys, boys of Fall. Of here we go. I heard that coming in here today. <laughs> All right, here we go. Third and two. 
Four seconds left, three seconds. Pearson's got to go long, looking for one last opportunity. It is intercepted at the 20, and the Knights have won the double A2 championship. The last pass picked off by Benedetta Loria, and the Knights are celebrating their seventh Catholic Football League championship. This interception right here by Loria completes the journey for this Xavier Knights team from the outhouse to the penthouse, one and eight last year. And here they are on championship Saturday celebrating a double A2 title and bringing that back to downtown Manhattan. These boys all worked their tails off, all bought in big time for Chris Stevens in this program. And should be incredibly proud to know that they'll go down in history. See there, Benedetta Loria. Listen, man, he has a hitch when he throws the ball. He has a hitch when he kicks. He grew up playing soccer. He's got the biggest play right now, uh, or at least the championship ceiling play for the Knights. Uh, Xavier wins the double A2 championship. It is their first title since 2015 when they beat Christ the King here at Mitchell Athletic Complex to win the double A, 28 to 25 and their quest for that triple crown. Listen, man, they won They won the Derby, they won the Preakness, now they're going for the Belmont on Thanksgiving Day. <laughs> exactly, and that 99th edition of their Turkey Bowl against Fordham Prep, gonna get the chance to finish out their season in even more spectacular fashion, but for right now, I'm pretty sure these guys are pumped to know that they're going home, double A two champions and that they've really reinstituted some of the winning ways that this Xavier football program prides themselves on. And again, Xavier, they improved. Their season's not over. Again, that big Turkey Bowl game coming up at Aviator Sports Complex. They improved to 7-2 and two. Mount St. Michael. A bitter pill there for them. They fall to 6-5. and five. But uh, listen, man, it looked like it was going to go sideways pretty early on for, for Mount. They, uh, they showed that battle back ability. Uh, they should certainly have their heads held high. It's about that ladder and climbing the ladder, and it's not always uh, a straight elevator up, right? You've got to go rung by rung, and that's what Mount's trying to do here. So uh, even though they lost this game, you've got to feel they took a step in the positive direction. Oh, yeah. I, I was really impressed with the resiliency of this Mount St. Michael team at various different points. Looked like they're on the brink of getting blown out and kept fighting back, kept figuring out a way to stay in the game even down to, you know, the final three minutes. So a really, really hard-fought championship that they played in here today. And, Dylan, you're 100% right. It, it takes more than just a year. It takes more than just a class to build a program into a winner. And I think these guys have all, you know, laid down a foundation that's going to help this program from the Bronx thrive for years to come as they hope to get back to the, the winning ways that they're so accustomed to throughout the 90s and early 2000s. So Shane Zalatovsky named the offensive MVP of this game. Gavin Gallagher also having an unbelievable day for the Knights. You see the plaque and the pictures that will uh, be part of his future forever, no doubt about it. And Sean Donahue, the deserved defensive player of the game. The kid from Queens, man, he did a little bit of everything, especially early on, setting the tone. And here comes the presentation of the Tom Murray Trophy. The AA2 championship trophy will go into the hands of Chris Stevens. And he'll be surrounded by his boys. And there you go. The trophy lift, Chris Stevens. They want to be a AA1 team, but they, re they cherish these kind of moments to lift the championship trophy. When I was in college, I remember my, my old coach, Dabo Sweeney, used to give us the line, bloom where you're planted, meaning, you know, you can't control some of the, the uncontrollables, the circumstances, the schedule, but what you can control is how you respond to them. And all you can do is win where you're placed. They had a dominant, fantastic season here in AA2, and I'm sure before we know it, they'll be back up in AA1. Hey, we'll know Xavier. We expect them to be there next year as that's where the Knights have pretty much kept a residence. And you got to feel that 
think there'll be a couple of celebrations in the near future down at Mario's uh, with these knights. And uh, to the uh, the Xavier faithful, if anybody wants to give me a heads up, <laughs> I can meet you on Second Avenue. I'm anxious to taste some of that chicken at Mario's, but well deserved for all these guys. Yeah, what a moment for Xavier! And I think it, I, I think it feels even better the fact there was adversity in the game. Right again, early on, it looked like it was going to be a blowout for Xavier. You get the interception, you get the touchdown on your first play, and then all of a sudden. It's 14 nothing, and then Mount punches you in the face, and it's you're trailing at the half, and you're trailing for you know good portion of the second half as well. Yeah, no, I mean go down 15, 14 at halftime, and uh, you know must have felt really draining walking in at halftime, especially considering how Xavier got out the gate, um, walking in at, at or in, under, under a deficit. My apologies, um, but really responded very well in the second half, controlled clock. Really did a good job in all facets of the game. And that huge kick return from Gallagher to give them the field position to punch it in for a championship winning score there at the end just kind of, you know, underscores the completeness of this effort from Xavier. The Xavier fight song. It always feels a little bit better when you can do that after winning a championship. The seventh in school history and the first since 2015. That was the double A championship. And this one is the double A two title. So many heroes on the day for the Knights of Xavier and John Perez has the offensive MVP, Shane Zalatowski with him on the field. Shane, you just sing the fight song. You guys are champions again. Tell me what you're feeling. I'm, a, I'm I feel great. It's amazing. Get back here after the season we had last year. It was a real struggle, but I mean we worked hard. It's hard work, man. I love our coaches. I love these guys. I I go to go to any battle with them. I'm I'm I'm, I'm speechless. Uh, it's just such a great feeling. I love my teammates. I love my coaches. But we're number one. Tell me about the resiliency you guys had. Mount comes down the field. They tie it up. Bing, bang, boom, you guys are in the end zone again. Yeah, I mean, we knew all week it was going to be a dog fight. We, we weren't going to win, you know, how we've won in the past games, couple, a lot of touchdowns. But, hey, we knew it was going to be a dog fight. Our coaches prepared us very well for this game. And, look, at the end of the day, we knew what we had to do to get it done. Wouldn't be a patented Xavier win without the help of your offensive line. How big have they been all year? Uh, it, without them, I'm nothing. This team is nothing. They're a huge part of the offense. Look, we ground and pound. Without them, I mean, they're the real MVPs. This, all this is because of them. So they're the best players on, out, out there. I love them. Any message to the Xavier alums watching at home? We're number one again, baby. Let's go. Let's go. Guys, we'll send it back up to you. Thank you. Thanks, John. Congratulations to Shane Zalatowski, a Catholic high school football league champion and you mentioned it before Pat you go from a one win season and a lot of these guys there was no varsity experience on the team a year ago and Chris Stevens had to tell these guys listen dudes that's an anomaly that's not Xavier football and they proved it here today and throughout this regular season or this entire season uh, to be uh, crowned champion yet again. Yeah, the fact that just two years after you know be, being one of two teams in the New York Catholic League to lose their season due to COVID-19, um, for them this quickly to be back here winning a title in the AA2 division, I mean, it just really speaks to the leadership of both Coach Chris Stevens, his entire staff, but also these guys who hump it into the city every single day not easy taking the subway to get to school, to get to practice, uh, but these guys overcome all those obstacles, come out here and shine today. Uh, just something they should be incredibly proud of and something I'm sure you know guys like Shane Zalatowski will carry with them with a lot of pride for the rest of their lives. What a first game of our triple header here on the Varsity Media Sports Network. We've got the AA1 championship game coming up in about 35 minutes or so as more Catholic and Holy Trinity. There you see the Titans on the field to start their warm-ups. For the entire 
crew here at Varsity Media, our executive producer, Ben Turchin, Chris Sweeney on graphics, our sideline reporter, of course, John Perez, Ron Pierre, Angelo Caezo, and Matt McCower brown our A-team on cameras. For my broadcast partner, Pat Godfrey, Dylan Butler, thanking you for joining us here from Mitchell Athletic Complex again. Xavier are the AA2 champions.